Committee on Government Corporations will now come to order. Ayun buntag, uh, Secretariat, can you recognize our resource persons? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. We would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished resource persons from the House of Representatives. We have Representative Isidro T. Ungab, uh, Davao City 3rd District, author of House Bill Number 8930. Representative Mark Ogo, Baguio City Lone District, author of House Bill Number 8882. From the national government, we have from the DALG, Under Secretary Rico Judge Echiveri, External and Legislative Affairs, and Director Alex Roldan, the Regional Director, DILG Region 11. From the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Ms. Mar Director Maria Lourdes Lim, Regional Director, NEDA Region 11. Director Remedios and Densha, Regional Development Staff. Assistant Director Diane Gail Maharhan, Mr. Julius Casabal, and Ms. Lara Guiana Hidalgo. Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Environmental Staff from NEDA also. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Ms. Tennessee Ann Mengulio, Budget and Management Specialist 2. Local Government and Regional Coordination Bureau, together with Ms. Mary M. Lea Ganzon, Senior Budget and Management Specialist, DBM Region 11. From the Department of Finance, Ms. Tanya Rial, Division Chief, Corporate Affairs Group, Director Maria Pamela Kizon, BLGF, Local Fiscal Policy Office, Ms. Brenda Miranda, Chief of the Policy Planning, Programming, and Standards Division, and Ms. Gabriel Isip. From the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, we have Attorney Hill Roberto Mauro Palma, OIC Regional Director of DISH Region 11, and Attorney Alvin Giolagon, Assistant Chief, Legal Service Central Office. From the Nas Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, from the Environmental Management Bureau, Ms. Hovina Serafin, Senior Environmental Management Specialist, Ms. Elvira Pausing, Supervising Environmental Man Management Specialist. And from the Climate Change Service, we have Ms. Susan Noel, Ms. Joan Francis Flores of the Climate Change Mainstreaming and Inter Integration Division. And from DNR Region 11, Regional Director Bagani Fidel A. Evasco. From the De Department of Public Works and Highways, we have Undersecretary Eugenio Pipo Jr. for Regional Operations in Mindanao and Director Ray Peter Gile, Officer in Charge, Regional Director of DPWH Region 11. From the Department of Transportation, we have Mr. Ray Reynaldo Gachalian, Senior Transport Development Officer, Road Sector, Mr. Manuel Lardizabal, Water Sector, Mr. Howard Pakis, Air Sector, Mr. Christopher Floyd Kerihero, Air Transportation Division, as well as Engineer Neil Gabriel Bonto, Railway Sector. From the D Department of Social Welfare and Development, Under Secretary Luz Viminda Ilagan, Legislative Liaison Affairs, Director Raquel Nunez, Regional Director of DSWD Region 11, and Ms. Christine Padilla Antolin, representing USEC NERI for operations. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Assistant Secretary Dominic Tolentino Jr. for Regional Operations Group, Ms. Marilu Laguting, Chief Trade Industry Development Specialist, and Director Delia Ayano. OIC Regional Director, Assistant Regional Director of DTI Region 11. From the Department of Tourism, we have Director Tanya Virginia Tan, Regional Director of DOT Region 11, as well as Attorney Viveka Lopez and Ms. Silvia Villalobos. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Ron Mikael Uy, 
of the Legal Division from the Department of Agriculture, the Director Ricardo M. Onyate, Regional Director of DA Region 11. From the Department of Energy, we have Engineer Ruby de Guzman, Chief Science Research Specialist from the Biomass Energy Management Division, Renewable Energy Management Bureau, together with Attorney Don Villanueva. Secret, uh, from the DOST Department of Science and Technology, we have Engineer David Herrera, Senior Science Research Specialist, Environment and Biotechnology Division, Industrial Technology Development Institute. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Mr. Raul Lodovice, Officer in Charge, Division Chief of the Population and Housing Census Division, as well as Mr. Ruben D. Abaro of PSA Region 11, Regional Director. From the local government units in the Davao region, we have Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, City of Davao. From the City of Samal, we have Attorney Nimrod Ogati, City Planning and Development Coordinator. We have Mayor Virginia Perandos of the Municipality of Carmen. We have Mayor Alvera Veronica Rimando Arancon, Municipality of Mako. Mayor Franco Calida, Munis Municipality of Hagonoy. We have uh, representing Mayor Peter Paul Valentin of the Municipality Ma of Malalag, Vice Mayor Irvin Emphasis. We also have Mayor Pedro Caminero from the Mun Municipality of Padada. For the City of Baguio, we have Mayor Benjamin B. Magalong, Vice Mayor Faustino A. Oloan, together with Councilors Fred Bagbagen, Vladimir Kayabas, Isabelo Kosalan, Filian Wegan Alan, Mike Lawana, Lulu Tabanda, Joel Alangsab, and Pacoy Ortega. From the DENR CAR, Cordillera Administrative Region, we have the Regional Director, Engineer Ralph C. Pablo. From the I the DILG CAR, we have Ms. Araceli San Jose, OIC, Regional Director, together with Attorney Genevieve Shontogan. From the Department of Tourism CAR, Ms. Ovita A. Ganongan. From the NEDA CAR, Mr. Gregorio P. Aris III, Chief Economic Development Specialist from the NEDA Regional Office CAR. From the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, we have Attorney R.D. Fahutag, Executive Assistant 5. From John Hay Management Corporation, Mr. Alan Garcia, President and Chief Executive Officer, together with Ms. Jane Teresa Tabalincos, Vice President and COO. From the BCDA, we have Ms. Jocelyn Cañones, Vice President for Corporate Planning Basis Conversion Development Authority. Together with Attorney Gisela Kalalo and Mr. Emil Dries. From the DTI CAR, we have Ms. Juliet Lucas, Assistant Regional Director, DTI CAR. That's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Rachel. I would like to recognize, likewise, the presence of Senator Aimee Marcos. Uh, for purposes of uh, time management and to have a more synchronous proceedings here, the chair and the committee is proposing the following. We will discuss first the Metro Davao Development Authority. Thereafter, we will be discussing the amendments to the city charter of Baguio. That would be around 11.15, 11.15 thereabouts. Thereafter, we will be discussing the amendments to the local government code that would entail the amendments to several waste management acts. So that would be around 11, 11, 11.50 or 11.45. So our guests, our resource persons, if you have other tasks on hand, you can zoom out 
you can uh, log off and just join us in this virtual hearing taking into consideration the times i mentioned a while ago is it is it okay with you uh, unless you would want to uh, hear the problems of other localities even if you're from cordillera if you would want to hear uh, some uh, inputs coming from uh, davao okay lang po yon so we start first with uh, davao uh, may we ask the city mayor of davao before we ask and with the indulgence of senator marcos mayor in daisara to give us a statement as to the the propriety and relevance of the creation of a Davao Metropolitan Davao Metro Davao Development Authority. Mayor Indai, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Honorable Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. Good and morning, belated happy everyone. birthday, ma'am. Yes, thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, in the Philippine Development Plan of 2017 to 2022, the country's economic drive towards a more modern and globally competitive economy is explicitly stated therein as it adopted the policy of national dispersion through regional agglomeration that is to revitalize large cities and eventually steer them to expand their physical areas for planning as well as their influence areas for urban services delivery in the philippine development Plan specifically cited Metro Davao along with Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, and Cagayan de Oro as metropolitan centers for commercial, financial, and uh, administrative activities. Recognizing the economic and demographic trends, the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022 with its national spatial strategy it identified Tagum in Davao del Norte, Island Garden City of Samal, and Panabo also in Davao del Norte, Digos in Davao del Sur, and highly urbanized city of Davao, as well as the municipalities of Carmen in Davao del Norte and Santa Cruz in Davao del Sur, comprising a metropolitan Davao. So we are here to support the House Bill 839, of, uh, authored by uh, Congressman Ungab, creating the Metropolitan Davao Development Authority over the said areas, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I, I would like to uh, add something. During our previous hearing, Senator De La Rosa, and I, I'd like to seek your, your comments on this reaction, Senator De La Rosa, Propose the addition of four more uh, municipalities, Padada, uh, Hagonoy, Santa Maria, and, and Malalag. Uh, so that, according to Senator De La Rosa, I'm trying to reach him now, the area would now encompass almost all of the coastal uh, towns uh, going, going down, going south, uh, Madam Mayor. Are you amenable to this? Uh, amendment uh, proposed by Senator De La Rosa. Right, okay. Um, okay, um, in the uh, House of Representatives version of the bill, other municipal, other cities are requested to be included as well in the Metropolitan Davao, and that is Malita and uh, Mati City in Davao Oriental and Malita in Davao Occidental. And um, Davao City, sir, has no objection with the inclusion of Padada, Hagonay, Santa Maria, and uh, Malalag. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, one more question before I will let you will let you go. I know you're you're busy. My my experience before as chairman of the Metro Manila Council, Metro Manila Development Authority, provided me with some proposed solutions as to the traffic congestion we experienced before. And this has something to do with the transfer of the franchising functions coming from the LTFRB 
and I proposed before to be transferred to the MMDA, and I'm proposing now to be transferred to the Metro Davao Development Authority. So my, my proposals here, uh, Madam Mayor, is to have the Metro Davao Development Authority likewise assume the functions of the granting of franchises to public utility vehicles within the Metro Davao area plus plus if you would want the assumption as the assumption of functions just like what they are doing in other jurisdictions i'm referring to other countries and i'm sure the dotr they're listening right now the assumption of the functions of management or perhaps board chairmanship of the Davao International Airport, uh, Madam Mayor. Are you amenable to that? Yes, uh, thank you, Senator Talentino. Um, I am just the chair of uh, the Metropolitan Development uh, Coordinating Committee, Mr. Chair, so I would like to consult the chairperson of the Regional Development Council, which is Governor Tyrone Uy, because uh, this initiative uh, came from his term as a Regional Development uh, Chairperson for Region 11. Uh, I will get back to you on this, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. And if I may add, during our last hearing, the the head of the Region 11 Police Force proposed an amendment likewise to include the creation of a Metro Davao Police District. It is similar to the NCRP of Metro Manila, Southern Police District, Eastern Police District, Northern Police District. But here, uh, uh, reg the, region, the Regional Police Office would have un under, under its jurisdiction a separate Metro Davao Development Police District. Are you amenable to that uh, proposal, uh, Madam Mayor? Yes, we are uh, amenable to that, uh, Mr. Chair, because that is already one of the functions of uh, the committee coordinating with uh, the, mem the com member cities of uh, Metropolitan Davao. And uh, we are starting already with the Public Safety and Security Plan for Metro Davao. It is uh, funded by the contributions of all the LGU members of Metro Davao. Likewise, likewise, ma'am, Congressman Ungab mentioned something. I, I don't know if he was uh, uh, just misquoted or I was misquoted as to the possibility of having an elected chairman of the Metro Davao Development Authority. Are you amenable to that? Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to consult the Regional Development Council chairperson on that because uh, I do not see that in the um, papers I have with the Metropolitan Davao Development uh, Committee. Finally, ma'am, also not part of the proposed measure, the setup during my my earlier life as Metro MMDA chairman is that the MMDA chairman is the Regional Development Council chairman of Metro Manila. So in this setup, would you be willing to have the chairperson of the Metro Davao Development Authority chair that subregion for purposes of economic planning and other uh, measures as, as a separate RDC, separate from Region 11. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I will consult the RDC chairperson, Governor Tyler Uy, and the entire Regional Development Council on that, and we'll get back to you on the three items, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I know you're very busy, so I think uh, Senator Marcos is... Uh, raising her hand and would want to have a question. Ma'am, Manang? Yes, Mr. Chair. Th 
Thank you very much and welcome, uh, Mayor Sara, to uh, our uh, Senate hearing. Um, during the previous hearing, uh, I already extended my wholehearted support to um, the Metro Davao effort, um, given that uh, it reestablishes the ancient undivided Davao in Cotobato, over which my uh, grandfather Mariano Marcos uh, became governor general in the early days. It is also an integration concept, as Chairman Tolentino well knows, um, that derives from my mother, the first governor of Metro Manila. So, alam ko na nag-work ang ganito. Yung akin lang, uh, fair warning lang, dun sa sinasabi ni uh, Chairman Tol, na sana wag natin masyadong komplikahin. Uh, pakarami na nitong mga powers na sinasabi natin para wala nang hadlang kasi alam naman natin na yung Davao eh, talagang mabilis ang uh, pag-uunlad at kinakailangan na magkaroon ng coordinated at integrative body. Yun lang po. Thank you. Salamat, uh, Senator Marcos. I'd like to recognize Senator Bato de la Rosa, who is now online. He just joined us. Senator de la Rosa, you're recognized. Senator Bato? Yeah, good. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ay, uh, good morning. You have the floor. Good morning. Uh, yeah, uh, I just uh, got uh, some problems with my connectivity. So I was uh, not able to catch up uh, with the answer of the mayor when you asked. Uh, uh, did you ask her about the, the inclusion of uh, additional four okay, municipalities no. coming from the Bozo? Is it okay with the, the good mayor, uh, Mr. Chairman? We can ask her to answer again, if you would want. Or you're asking okay, us, yeah. uh, Mayor Indai, whether she would want to have the four uh, municipalities included as part of the Metro Davao. Ma'am? Yes, uh, thank you. Senator Bato. Apa. Thank you, Senator Marcos and Senator Tolentino. And good morning, uh, Senator Bato. Davao City interposes no objection, but I only speak for Davao City here, uh, Senator Bato, because I've seen it done in the lower house with uh, the inclusion of Malita in Davao Occidental and Mati in Davao Oriental. But um, I will add this to the questions that we will ask uh, the Regional Development Council and the RDC chairperson, uh, and we will get back to the committee, Senator Bato, sir. Yeah, th thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, ma I just would like to to give you the the, the rationale behind why not that not that just because I am I am from Davao Nilsor, but uh, the rationale behind uh, my proposal is that uh, nakita ko kasi na yung uh, inclusivity sa all the uh, coastal municipalities and cities within the uh, Davao Gulf. Kaya nakita ko ma'am na uh, halos lahat kasama doon sa, sa Metro Davao Development uh, Authority, lahat yon except yung uh, remaining four uh, municipalities from Davao Sur, which I propose to be included. Del, para maganda yung buong Davao Gulf area, ang development ay tuloy-tuloy at walang malilip out within that, uh, within Davao Gulf. So yun, yun lang sa akin, ma'am, yung uh, uh, contiguous uh, factor ng uh, area ng Davao Gulf. That, that's, yun lang sa akin. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, okay po, uh, Senator Bato, we, I will uh, relay that to the Regional Development Council, Senator Bato. Thank you. So, Senator Bato, are you are you implying that if the four municipalities will not be included, you will be objecting to this uh, proposal? Hindi <laughs> naman, Mr. Chairman. Sa akin lang is an objective view lang of the development, as far as development is concerned, within the Davao Gulf area. Para kasing napuputol eh, sayang. Uh, kung gusto mong i-develop yung buong Davao Gulf, isama mo na rin yung coastal municipalities ng Davao Sur. Kasi uh, kung hindi isama kung hindi isama ang malita, okay lang sa akin. Uh, I understand na malayo na masyado sa metropolitan Davao yung mga municipalities na yan, which I have cited, yung uh, Hagonoy, Padada, uh, Malalag, and Santa Maria. Malayo na siya sa Metropolitan Davao. But since sinama na rin yung Malita, nadadaanan yung uh, municipalities na yan, so we might as well connect the dots. Dahil nga, sinama nga rin yung uh, Mate City ng Davao Oriental, which is already outside of uh, 
the double gulf area nandoon na siya sa labas then siguro mas maganda sa akin ha objective view of the as far as development is concerned uh, sana makunik natin lahat ng dots along the double gulf area that's that's uh, that's just just all uh, uh, my point mr chairman thank you akala ko sasabihin mo nine dash line so thank you senator de la rosa uh, with the permission of the good mayor of davao city would like to uh, unless madam mayor meron pa kayong gustong idagdag uh, wala na po sir would like to recognize the regional the rdc neda region 11 uh, miss lourdes lim we're trying we were trying to get in touch with you since last week i understand with the permission of our colleagues and uh, mayor inday sara the director maria lourdes lim regional director of region 11 neda would be making a presentation ito po yung mapa eh na sinasabi ni uh, senator de la rosa uh, very clear naman ngayon uh, yes the uh, neda director lim are you now virtually online or present ma'am thank you thank you uh, mr chair matagal na namin kayong hinahanap eh yes sir <laughs> apologies okay. for the uh, connectivity problems uh, the last hearing uh, mr chair mayong buntag kanatong tanan ma'am you will, you will be presenting this we hope to get inputs from you regarding the uh sound contribution the creation of this authority would result in terms of tourism in terms uh, yes, sir. of fisheries in terms of sustainable economic growth plus ma'am uh, this is not yet part of the bill we which this this committee would probably insert an item on environmental protection because this is the, the davao gulf area uh Doc, director lim you have the floor thank you uh, so much uh, mr chair mayung bunta ganatong tanan at the outset mr chair uh, may i inform that the neda comments uh, on the metro davao development authority deals is for signature of uh, neda socio economic planning secretary carl kendrick chua but I received his instructions last night to convey NEDA's position on the MDDA bills. May I be allowed, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, share a Please few proceed. slides? Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, it's now on screen, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, the Philippine Development Plan at 2017 to 2022 and its uh, midterm update identifies Metro Davao as one of the three major metropolitan areas in the country, along with the Metro Manila and the Metro Cebu. The Philippine Development Plan, with its National Spatial Strategy, or the NSS, identified the cities of Tagum, the Island Garden City of Samal, and Panabo in Davao del Norte, Digos in Davao del Sur, and the highly urbanized city of Davao, as well as the municipalities of Carmen in Davao del Norte, and Santa Cruz in Davao del Sur, comprising Metropolitan Davao. A metropolitan arrangement is where a highly urbanized city and the local government units contiguous with it enter into a cooperative venture in planning and implementing urban development initiatives. Davao region's main spatial development strategy involves the expansion of metropolitan Davao into a comprehensive outcomes for rural empowerment or the C-O-R-E Growth Triangle that focuses on the agri-industrial centers along the Davao Gulf and bounded by the region's linear urban corridor. It's the heavily um, shaded uh, urban corridor on the right side of the, of the screen, which contiguously covers the areas of Tagum, Municipality of uh, Carmen, Panabo City, Davao City, Santa Cruz, and Pico City. 
the institutionalization of Metropolitan Davao was made possible through the approval of the House Bill 8930 and creating Metropolitan Davao Development Authority, authored by the third district representative of Davao City, Congressional Representative Isidro T. Ungam. Consequently, Senator Ronald Villarosa and Senator Christopher Lawrence Go filed Senate Bills number 2153 and 2157, respectively, creating the MDDA. Both Senate bills provide that the MDDA shall have jurisdiction over Davao City, the cities of Panabo, Tabum, and the Island Garden City of Samal, in Davao del Norte, and the city of Digos in Davao del Sur, the city of Mati in Davao Oriental, and the municipalities of Santa Cruz in Davao del Sur, Carmen in Davao del Norte, Mako in the province of Davao de Oro, and Malita in Davao Occidental. During the first part of the Senate hearing on June 2, 2021, Senator De La Rosa verbally expressed his proposal for the inclusion of the contiguous municipalities of Hagonoy, Padada, Malalag, and Sulu, all in Davao del Sur, to be placed uh, under the jurisdiction of the Metro Davao Development Authority. However, these areas were not explicitly stated in Senate Bill 2153. With these developments, Mr. Chair, we wish to inform this uh, August body that NEDA supports the creation of the Metropolitan Development Authority. First, the creation of Metro Davao is consistent with sections 11 and 13 of the provisions of the 1987 Philippine Constitution where the Congress may, by law, create special metropolitan political subdivisions subject to a plebiscite as set forth in Section 10 thereof. The jurisdiction of a metropolitan authority that will be created shall be limited to basic services requiring coordination and that local government units may group themselves, consolidate or coordinate their efforts services and resources for purposes commonly beneficial to them in accordance with law. Second, the configuration proposed under Senate Bills 2153, 2157, and House Bill 8930 is generally consistent with the Davao Region's Development Plan for the period 2017 to 2022 and the Davao Regional Spatial Development Framework 2015 to 2045, and the Philippine Development Plan cited the areas comprising Metropolitan Davao as earlier cited. Given the foregoing, the coverage of Metropolitan Davao should be well defined to identify the specific cities and municipalities that will eventually comprise it. This will enable the proposed authority to focus its urban planning and services more effectively within its geographic coverage, which is the essence of metropolitan arrangements. Significantly, NEDA supports the creation of the MDDA because it will strengthen the economy of the region due to economy, scale economies and greater efficiency. On the funding for Metro Davao Development Authority, NEDA suggests that this be sourced from the contributions of member agencies, as well as from local fees and charges which the authority may impose. This is also in view of the anticipated increase in the national tax revenues of LGU starting calendar year 2022 due to the Mandana's doctrine. NEDA recommends that the provision on the conduct of a plebiscite be considered as this is mandated by the Constitution. Mr. Chair, we'd like now to respond to the three questions that uh, uh, the uh, Honorable Chair propounded during the last uh, Senate Committee hearing on June 2. First question is, how can agencies contribute to Metropolitan Davao's growth given their mandate? 
Letter 11, as the Secretariat to the Regional Development Council 11, shall ensure that the initiatives, programs, and activities of agencies within Metropolitan Davao are implemented and aligned with national and regional development policies and programs and plans. The second question is, is there a need to create a sub-office to cater to MDDA concerns? Our response is no, there will be no need to create a sub-office as NEDA 11 can still cater to the MDDA concerns specifically in relation to the various planning activities for the area consistent with the trust and priorities under the Davao Regional Development Plan. The third question is, will Metro Davao adversely affect the development prospects of the rest of Davao region? The Metro Davao development will not adversely affect the development of other areas in Davao region, but will in effect strengthen the economy of the entire region due to the scale economies and enhanced cooperation resulting from the institutionalization of MDDA. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to inform you that there is an earthquake currently here. But uh, just to complete uh, this uh, manifestation, as a com complementary strategy, the Davao Region Spatial Development Framework as well as the Davao Regional Development Plan 2017 to 2022 midterm update, seek to harness the potentials of the local government units of the areas around the Davao Gulf and the rest of the region, which includes the four municipalities earlier proposed by Senator De La Rosa. Before I end, Mr. Chair, I'd like to also convey that the Regional Development Council 11, during its June 8, 2021 second quarter meeting, passed a resolution strongly supporting the passage of Senate Bills 2153 and 2157. A copy of the resolution was provided to the chairpersons of the, the joint Senate committees. That would be all, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this opportunity to express NEDA's position on the creation of the Metropolitan Davao Development Authority. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma uh, the chair has some reservations and comments relative to your uh, statement that the plebiscite is needed. Perhaps uh, if you will read the bills, no mention of a plebiscite was made and uh, there is a there is a Supreme Court case which probably would support that if you're creating a new political entity th there's a big difference between a special administrative region if I'm not mistaken so there might not be a need for a plebiscite here I, I mentioned the special administrative region because you likewise mentioned that earlier on the net effect would be the creation of a separate planning body. So we will now have a new RDC for this. The case that I cited a while ago is Metropolitan Manila Development Authority versus Bel Air Village Association, which mentioned that MMDA is not a political unit of the government. Therefore, no plebiscite is needed. In the same manner, if we create via legislative fiat the MDDA, which would not be a separate political unit, no plebiscite would be needed, uh, Director Lim. So my question is this, payag bu ba kayo na magkaroon ng separate development, uh, development council ang MMDA, MM, MDDA, separate from RDC 11, uh, similar, to, similar to Metro Manila. Which yes, has uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. uh, that is allowed by law. So uh, we uh, submit to the uh, wisdom of the Honorable Chair. Thank you, ma'am. My colleagues, uh, if you have questions that can be directed to Director Lim, you have the floor. Senator Aimee, Senator Bato. Balikan ko po yung question ko, ma'am. Uh, uh, 
Yung tanong ko po kanina, because the bill mentioned something about transport management, I proposed the transfer of franchising functions to the MDDA to facilitate the coordination, formulation of standards, etc. within the MDDA area, uh, sphere of jurisdiction. Are you amenable to that, Neta, before I ask the OTR? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, that could be absorbed as one of the... Uh powers or authorities of uh, MDDA, the transfer of franchising of uh, public utility vehicles. So we remove that from the LTFRB, from Region 11 LTFRB, and for this area, transfer it to the MDDA. Is that the... Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, but then uh, we uh, would like to consult our uh, counterparts here, uh, Mr. Chair. That, Thank that you. I'll be asking uh, the OTR. Uh, Awaying ka ng DOTR. Nandiyan sila. Uh, <laughs> is there a DOTR representative around? Uh, DOTR? Uh, from the road sector. Ang dami nyo. Uh, yes, from the road sector and the air transport sector. Mr. Reynaldo Gachalian and Mr. Christopher Herrero. Are you around? Are you still around? DOTR. Wala yung DOTR. Ah. Makakala na siya about you sila. Yes. Uh, may I inform the committee that uh, the uh, RDC uh, is uh, uh, has uh, submitted actually uh, the uh, proposal for the formulation of a uh, Metropolitan Davao Public Transport and the Traffic Management Plan. Uh, this will guide the development of uh, transport and traffic management of uh, Davao City and uh, its contiguous uh, local government units. Uh, we are thankful to the Department of Transportation for financing uh, this uh, initiative, uh, Mr. Chair. They have allocated an initial amount of 50 million for the formulation of this uh, master plan for Metro Davao public transport and uh, traffic management. Uh, perhaps uh, this uh, master plan can uh, include that uh, a uh, particular aspect of a uh, franchising, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, DOTR, are you around now? Can can we listen to you? Uh, Reynaldo Gachalian of the road sector, Mr. Christopher Quijerero of the transport sec air transport sector, DOTR. Tayo naririnig ng DOTR. Huh? I think you're logged in. Magagalit sa inyo si Senator Bato. The OTR, can you reply? Tawad pala si Secretary Tugade na yung inano natin. Where is the OTR? Ah, direct at Christopher Floyd K. Herrero. Can you reply? Speak louder, please. Ah, sorry po. We will ask the wisdom of the Honorable Undersecretary for Planning and Project Development. Because I think we don't have an... Uh, what do you call this? Representative from the road sector present today. I am from the air sector, sir, so I cannot speak in behalf of the road sector, sir. Nga, pero kanina, tinanong ko rin sa air sector. Are you willing to share the airport management functions to the MDDA? Air, air transport na yan, baka kaya mo nang sagutin. I, sir, actually po, uh, for the air transport management, uh, we will... Uh, reply by paper to your office. Uh, we will consult CAAP as well, sir. I'm not referring to the air traffic control. I'm not referring to the uh, scheduled departure of planes, but I'm referring to the overall management of the airport, which should be shared or co-managed by the MDDA. A Do you have a position on that? Uh, sir, as of now, sir, we don't have any position for that. Uh, so when need... can we have your position? Uh, within next week, sir, we will submit a paper directly to your office, Paul. Coming from Secretary Togade? Uh, from Under Secretary Reynoso, sir, and uh, we will, uh, for review of uh, Secretary Togade, sir. I think you should uh, submit that soon because uh, we will be having a committee report on this. So, wala nang iba sa DOTR for the road sector. Uh, Mr. Gachalian, we can we can see you logged in. 
Siguro you can just uh, unmute so we can hear you. Mr. Gachalian of the, the OTR. Wala pa rin ang DOTR? Where are you, Mr. Gachalian? Uh, are you not sharing your uh, laptop with other DOTR personnel? Paano, paano tayo makakatapos nito, uh, Mr. Gachalian? So we have to move on. Uh, may we now ask the DBM? Pabalikan kita, Mr. Gachalian. DBM, are you around? Director, di naman si Wendell ito, Miss Mary El Yula Ganzo, Guanzon of the DBM. Yes, Mom, good the morning, floor. Mr. Chair. Yes, this is, yes, the, this is the question. Talk. This is the question emanating from the chair. In my previous lifetime, again, the MMDA receives, though not a political unit, a share coming from the ERA, Internal Revenue Allotment. The MMDA receives an ERA. I think uh, they receive around 46 million a year as ERA coming from the national government. So the provinces, they receive, the cities, they receive, and MMDA receive. My proposal and question is this. Is DBM amenable to that MMDA model wherein the proposed MDD, MDDA will likewise be receiving an appropriate ERA to fund its operations, DBM. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think with regards to the funding requirements of MDDA, in order to carry out its purpose in its initial operation, I think our central office is the best position to respond to the operational cost funding of MDDA. My, my, question uh, about, uh, my question is about the internal revenue allotment. What is the position uh, of yes, DBM? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. I would like to refer it to our uh, DBM counterpart, in the LGRCB, Ms. Tennessee. Is she around? Uh, yes, Good. Mr. Chair. Good morning, Paul. Um, um, our division chief is also with us attending here, sir. So if... You would allow po she can answer your question, Mr. Chair. Pinagpasapasahan nyo na ako. Ah. Sino, sino yung isa? Director? Good morning, Mr. Smart. Good morning, Mr. Chair. This is Rowena Marte po. Yes, you're recognized, ma'am. Ah, yes po. Can you answer uh, that question? Ah, uh, yes po, sir. So we recognize, sir, that the M uh, MMDA is not an LGU and that on the LGUs, namely the provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays are entitled to the just share in national taxes as mandated under the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Um, the era of um, MMDA, uh, the provision of era stem from uh, the issuance of uh, Presidential Decree Number 921, Series of 1976, to provide for the administrati uh, administration of local financial services in Metropolitan Manila. So, bala si Section 15 po ng, uh, of the same uh, PD provides that the Iran-specific tax allotment accruing to the provinces of Rizal and Bulacan under the provision of PD number 144 as amended and PD number 436 as amended respectively shall remain as presently allotted up to June 1976 and thereafter that allotment shares of the um, uh, aforesaid provinces corresponding to area population and um, uh, 10% equity of the municipalities integrated within the Metropolitan Manila area shall be allocated and remitted to the Metropolitan Manila Commission. So the sources of revenues of the MMC were carried over by the subsequent laws. Thus, the era share of MMC corresponding to the era of the municipalities integrated within the Metropolitan Manila area 
was um, continuously remitted to the MMDA. So currently, Paul, Pateros na lang po ang municipality. That is why we computed the era of MMDA based on the data of uh, Pateros. So um, this uh, era share of um, MMDA po is being uh, contested by the leagues of um, uh, LGU since they um, argue that MMDA nga po is not an um, is not a local government unit. However, since it is provided by the law creating the um, uh, Metropolitan Manila Council and was carried on by the subsequent laws, we cannot um, uh, we we continue to provide the era. So. Um, However, we also have reservations regarding this, uh, Mr. Chair, since uh, like what the leagues um, uh, argues. Reservations, ma'am? Yes, reservations in so far yes, as MMDA have, is concerned or yes, MDDA? M MDDA, sir. Since yun nga po, kinakontest na nga po ng local government units yung pagkakaroon po ng era ng MMDA. So, and uh, ang, ang sinasabi nga po sa Philippine Constitution, um, LGUs lang dapat yung may just share sa era. But, but has, has this been uh, resolved by the Supreme Court for the last four, four decades or, or more? Well, I think Have this... Been con yes. Uh, I'm not aware, sir, if there is a, um, a Supreme Court decision regarding this, but as far as I know, sir, um, wala pong, hindi po siya na sa Supreme Court. So this is not prohibited? Since it is not, it is uh, included po in the um, law creating MM, MMA. So, um, so, so what I'm saying, Director, is this. Since we have a precedent here, we have a model that has been traditionally uh, been in effect for several decades. Can't this model be applied to the MDDA? Uh, we will defer, sir, to the uh, wisdom of the Congress since uh, uh, we just implement what is uh, provided in the law, sir. So if the law provides that uh, the MDDA will have a share in the era, then we will, we will just implement, po, sir. That in effect says, bahala na kayo. <laughs> Thank you, Director Marte. But uh, Sorry, reading sir. the bills, how will the MDDA, MDDA initially fund its operations? Um, we have um, we have position papers, sir, on the uh, proposed appropriations. If I may be allowed to manifest, sir, the DBM position paper. Go ahead, and then we'll ask Congressman Ungab uh, on this okay. subject. Okay. Po. So we recognize the objectives of the bill to establish a dedicated entity that will handle the formulation and implementation of programs and projects for the delivery of specific services in Metropolitan Davao. This may include a system of urban infrastructure facilities and services to support the expanding residential, commercial, industrial, and institutional activities in view of the rapid urbanization in the area. We also acknowledge the continuing efforts of the different local government units in coordination with national government agencies concerned to integrate their efforts in accelerating the implementation of vital programs and projects that will result in sustainable economic growth in Mindanao. As to the funding for the MDDA, particularly in the form of regular appropriation, grant, and other contribution to be provided in the GAA, as is stated in Section 13 of the Substitute Bill, it may be noted that in view of the uh, Supreme Court decision on the Mandanas case starting fiscal year 2022 budget cycle, the LGUs are expected to have a significant increase in their respective uh, era shares, which will result in an equivalent decrease in the amount of available fiscal resources for programs and projects of the national government. So consequently, this will further deplete 
the limited funds intended for the priority programs and projects of the national government. Without additional source of revenues to offset the reduction of NG's fiscal resources, expenditures of the NG might have to be forcefully reduced, or the fiscal deficit of the NG will necessarily increase. Hence, we propose that the GAA funding for the operating requirements of the proposed MDDA should cover only any deficiency after considering the funds derived from other sources. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Um, one last question. And, and would that deficiency include the salaries for the MDDA employees? Because I, I foresee a, a, a great greater bulk for, for the salaries likewise. In, in my experience, uh, during my MMDA days, we have 7,200 employees, including the street sweepers, the traffic enforcers, uh, among others. So it would entail a, a big chunk of the uh, budgetary outlay. So th would that deficiency uh, cover that, the, the proposed uh, rank and file uh, salaries? Ma'am? Yes. Uh, yes, for sir. Uh, the operating ex uh, requirements uh, include the PS uh, requirements, sir. Thank you. Uh, can we have Congressman Ungab now, the former chairman of the Committee on Appropriations? Congressman, are you around? Congressman Ungab. Congressman Ungab of uh, Davao. Malaysia? Nakalagin ba? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you unmute, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, good morning. My yes, yes, sir. Congressman, you've heard all the comments uh, coming from the uh, several agencies, our colleagues here. Uh, as the principal author of this measure coming from the lower house, are you amenable to uh, the fine-tuning of, of the bill, which would entail several cures uh, insofar as the the problems encountered by the current MMDA is concerned. So are, are you uh, amenable to the transport sector sector solution, the, my, my proposal uh, relative to the airport? Uh, what about the era? Your comment, sir. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I adhere to the wisdom of the chairman being a former uh, Metro Manila Development Authority uh, uh, top honcho. Uh, I, I I remember uh, in the previous years when uh, you were still the chairman and uh, we met there at the during the budget hearings. Uh, you were able to defend very well the the budget and the operations of uh, Metro uh, Metro Manila Development Authority. But of course, uh, I also believe that uh, we. We we need to consult the Regional Development Council as to the other powers that will be uh, uh, added to the Metropolitan Development Authority, considering that uh, uh, they were the the body behind this uh, initiative. And uh, with regard to the proposal of Senator De La Rosa, uh, this uh, representation has no objection. And last but not least, I remember the chairman made mention on the possibility of uh, electing the uh, chairman of the Development Council. Well, actually, I made mention of that in the previous hearing as a comment of a congressman during the plenary deliberation. It was a comment of a uh, uh, congressman uh, from Metro Manila, uh, particularly Congressman Atienza, who who made mention that uh, it's better if the chairman would be elected. Uh, however, uh, it was just a comment on the floor. Uh, he mentioned of uh, proposing it as an amendment, but uh, when the uh, period of amendments uh, came, uh, he did not make a formal amendment. So we retained the old provision in which the members of the council will elect the chairman. So you love know, Mr. Chairman. And thank you very much for. If I may ask, uh, Congressman uh, Ungab, uh, a little bit more of your time. So you you agree with me 
that uh, if MDDA is created, there is no need for a plebiscite because it is not going to be a separate political unit of the government. Correct? Yeah. No uh, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, because yes. we are not creating and a then, new LGU. Yes. If we, if we proceed with the suggestion of your colleague in the lower house, that the head of the MMD, MDDA be elected, not by his peers, but at large, but by the constituents, it would now be a political unit. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, so if, the, if the, it becomes a political unit, then there is now a need for a plebiscite. Uh, yun na yun, uh, Mr. Chairman. So I think uh, my, from my end, it would be better if we retain the same provision in which the uh, Metro Davao Development Council will elect its uh, chairman. The the members of the council will elect the chairman. Kasi kung uh, is subject na natin sa electoral process yeah uh, it will be another another uh, local government unit saka again kailangan na ng plebiscite so mahaba na yung proseso and, uh, and i hope it will be complicated i agree i agree with complicated. you congressman uh, ungab but but the reason why i the, the this chair the chair mentioned the transport and others is because we're looking at 10 or 15 years down the line when transport problems would arise a decade from now and this can only be resolved by a centralized authority central authority like this metro Dabao development authority which can really address this i'm, I'm referring not to mmda i'm referring to the tokyo metropolitan government the ottawa carlton region development authority i'm referring to the uh sold development authority so perhaps 15 years from now we might be correct that transportation would be a problem and and my, my suggestion modest aside is to offer a solution uh down the line uh, looking looking back at uh experiences of other uh, uh jurisdictions yun lang po ang, ang dahilan nun, uh, congressman ungab so maraming salamat po we'll we'll, we'll, we'll just have the Department of Finance and then the, the DILG. And thereafter, uh, we will be asking our colleagues to, to make their statements to wrap this up. Thank you, Congressman Ungab. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. DOF, are you around? Well, and Department of Finance, DOF. I think you're logged in. Um, Tanya Rial, are you around, DOF? What about the ILG? The ILG? I'm here, Mr. Chair. Yes. C can you comment on the measure? Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Chair. Regional Director, I, I thought uh, Yusek Echeberi is also around, or who is going to speak? Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I think the, the issue about... Uh, the position of the ILG on the creation of the Metropolitan uh, Davao Development Authority. Uh, the ILG Region 11 has uh, sent our position to, to your office and Secretary Anio on our position. Uh, in short, uh, we are not uh, uh, opposing uh, this and in fact, this will help. And if you ask about the uh if we need to restructure ourselves or put up sub office for the ilg for the proposed mdda uh the ilg your honor has offices up to the municipal level meaning uh, there will be no additional dilg personnel no changes in the uh, structure here uh if this will be approved and uh, we believe that this is very helpful in uh, the coordination effort from the different uh, LGUs, uh, particularly in the implementation of programs. It can support the LGUs directly by creating some regulations, uh, for, uh, traffic uh, management, and even a unified solid waste management program instead of being individual. So we believe that uh, 
the MMDA's creation is really a very uh, timely and uh, important uh, milestone for this part of the region, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. thank Chair. you, Director. Uh, Mr. Chair, is the is the private uh, sector? What, what's the name of the group? Dabao Chamber of Commerce still around? Dabao Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, Mission paper. Yusek Echeverri, you would like to add something? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, if uh, opposing the or chair... What? Are you opposing? <laughs> of course not, Mr. Chair. I just would like if, if the, the committee would just allow me to read the position paper go ahead, of go ahead. the department. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the part of the Department of Interior and Local Government, uh, uh, we interpose no objection. We fully support the creation of the proposed development authority, especially that their powers and function will not in no way diminish the authority of the local government units concerning purely local matters vested by the Constitution and the Local Government Code of 1991. The legislative measures are also in accordance with Section 33 of the Local Government Code stating that local government units may, through appropriate ordinances, group themselves, consolidate, or coordinate their efforts, services, and resources for purposes commonly beneficial to them. We laud the efforts of the region. We laud the efforts of uh, uh, the good mayor, Mayor Sara Duterte, and Congressman Ungab for initiating such uh, development authority, which, for, which will further spur more development and progress in the Davao region. It's about time na makahabol na rin ang Davao sa Metro Manila. And I'm very sure they will do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusek of the ILG. We're trying to wrap this up. I think uh, it's about time to hear from the four additional LGUs, Hagonoy, Padada, and Malalag. Uh, I think the mayor of uh, Hagonoy, Mayor Franco Calida, and Mayor Pedro Caminero, they're around, as well as Vice Mayor er Ervin Empasis. The chair would like to recognize Mayor Franco Calida of Hagunoy, Davao del Sur. Sir, are you around? I think you're logged in. Mayor Calida. Yes, I'm around, sir. And uh, yes, I'm listening. Question. Buntag, sir. A question here is, payag ba kayo dun sa proposal ni Senator De La Rosa na isama rin kayo dito? Uh, Siyempre. Very, very <laughs> payag kami. Man Masaya kami pag uh, ang Hagunoy ay uh, sasali dyan. But Hagunoy, we have about five coastal barangays and we are within the Davao Gulf region. And uh, pag merong mga development, siyempre masasama ang municipality po namin. Maraming salamat po. At uh, si Sen. De La Rosa, Sen. Tolentino, nandito po kayo sa amin lahat. Eh. Maraming Dagang salamat. Dagang salamat, Dagang salamat Mayor Kalida. Salamat po. May we ask Mr. Chair? comments from... Mr. Yes. Chair? Yes. Mr. Chair? Senator De La Rosa, yeah. right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity since uh, uh, Mayor Kalida is uh, around. Uh, I would like to ask the good mayor kung uh, totoo ba ay nakita ko dito sa mapa, mayor, na yung uh, uh, sulop ay meron rin palang... Uh, Beach, beach head down sa along the coastal area. Uh, is this true, uh, Mayor Kalida, yung sulok, merong porsyon doon na nasa coastal area ng Davao Gulf? Uh, um, hindi ko lang masiguro kung yung gaano kalaki yung coastal area nila. Pero na-mention na niya na meron dinadaanan din. Pero ang itong sa apat namin, ang pinakamalaki talaga. Na yeah, yeah, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Ay, kaya nga, sabi ko, baka mamaya, ang sulop naman ay hahabol dahil meron silang ilang meters dyan na occupying the coastal area. Pero kaya the reason why hindi ko sinali sa aking proposal is that as far as I know, maliit pa ako, hanggang ngayon, hindi ko alam na merong uh, portion pala ng uh, uh, sulop na occupying the coastal area of uh, uh, Davao Gulf. Kaya hindi ko sinama. So yun lang, Mr. Uh, uh, 
Amir Kalida, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It appears from the map na meron talagang coastal area yung Sulup. Mas malaki pa kaysa sa Malalang. Malalag. Sir, Dr. De La Rosa. Parang cove yung sa Malalag. Nakita po yung map. Nandito yung map. Oho. Pero uh, nakita ko, maliit na lang yan, uh, Mr. Chairman, dahil uh, yung nga, tingnan mo sa dulo, maliit na masyado yung ni-occupy niya. Kaya sa tingin ko, negligible. Negligible na yung uh, kanilang area na na... Hindi kaya sa sir, parang na-skip yung sulop nag, from, uh, from uh, Padada, nag-jump sa Malalag, parang ganon? Ay, with your, uh, if you want to consider it, Mr. Chairman, isalin na rin natin para walang magreklamo. Kompleto buong uh, coastal area ng Davao Gulf na nakukover natin. Yung Yun lang sa Sa mapa eh, sa mapa lang. Pero mas familiar ka sa area, sir. Since you're from the area. Yes, uh, medyo maliit nga lang yung na-occupy nila. Pero kung uh, gusto ng chairman na uh, isali yan, then uh, I have no objection. And I will uh, recommend na isali yes. kapag... Uh, yeah. Okay, sa Mr. Sa you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the committee takes takes note of the geographical position of Sulup, which is adjacent to Malalag and Padada in between. So it's like a an adjoining area along a bay, forming a cove. But the committee will study that, Senator De La Rosa. We recognize Mayor. Josephine Mariscal of Santa Maria on online now, ma'am. Uh, Mayor, yes, Mayor good Josephine. morning, Mr. Chair. Mayong buntag. Yes, good morning. Mayong buntag, Mr. Chair. Sinali ni Senator De La Rosa yung munisipyo nyo. Payag ba kayo? Ayaw nyo? Baka uh, first and foremost, ni Senator good morning Rosa, po. Eh. Apo, good morning po sa lahat. And... I would like to thank the good senator for considering our municipality, uh, municipality of Santa Maria. I would like to interpose no objection, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, to the inclusion of the munici municipality of Santa Maria into the NDDA uh, because totoo yung sinabi po ni Senator De La Rosa na ang ating uh, munisipyo po Uh, we have around mga six to seven coastal barangay areas, and uh, with regard to regards to Malalag Bay, we hold the bigger area na under the coastal waters of Santa Maria po ito. Um, we can we can visualize this right in front of us. You have like a, a, a bigger uh, coastal area. Thank you, yes, ma'am. Yes, po. Thank so you're willing to be added as part of the Metro Dabao Development Authority? Yes, po. Yes, po. Can we expect from the municipalities of Hagonoy, Padada, Malalag, and Santa Maria copies, copies of their Sangunian resolutions uh, to the effect that they are they are in concurrence with with the the measures? Yes, Mr. Chair, you can expect that from us. Yes, po. Ganon din po sa Hagonoy and Padada. Having heard all the mayors present, I think we're done with all the nitty-gritty of these measures and the committee will now consolidate Senate Bill 2116, authored by Senator Marcos, Senate Bill 2153, authored by Senator Bato de la Rosa. Senate Bill 2157, authored by Senator Christopher Bongo, as well as the House versions coming from Congressman Isidro Ungab. Are there other matters, Senator de la Rosa, or you... Kamu katakan kau kiri, anu belum tukar pisang. Senator. I'm okay, Mr. Chairman. No. There being no objections, I I think the committee is now inclined to approve the measures, and we will present this to the plenary in due time. The creation of the Metro Davao Development Authority, in so far as this committee. His concern is hereby approved. Thank you. 
Uh, we now go to the next item in the agenda, the, the, the creation, the amendment to the charter of Davao City, uh, Baguio City, I'm sorry, Baguio City. You recognize the presence of Mayor uh, Benjamin Magalong, the good congressman uh, of Baguio is likewise present. The congressman Go is present. The, the members of the Sangunian Panlunsod, they're all around. So we proceed with the next item. We'd like to we'd like to thank Mayor Sara Duterte for joining us. Ma'am, salamat po. Dagang salamat. Uh, for the Charter of Baguio, we recognize Congressman Mark Go. Tama po tayo sa oras? Yes, sir. Uh, Congressman, uh, before you make your opening statement, my I have I have a question that should be answered likewise by your opening statement. During the previous Congresses, this bill was already tackled and apparently this was vetoed by the former president. So the question that this committee will be uh, propounding is how different is this from the previous measures filed in previous Congresses, uh, Congressman. Congressman Go, you have the floor for your opening statement. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino, honorable members of this honorable uh, committee, uh, Senators Jaime Marcos and uh, Bato De La Rosa. Our resource persons, especially, especially our very good uh, Mayor Benji Magalong, our Vice Mayor Tino Olowan and members of our Council, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. It is my honor to sponsor House Bill 882 and once again present in the Senate the product of our extensive consultation and dialogue with the people of Baguio. This representation filed the same bill revising the Charter of Baguio City in the last Congress, which was likewise approved on third and final reading at the House. However, uh, it was not uh, decided in the Senate due to lack of material time. I'm once again appealing to the Honorable Senators for the approval of this measure. The Charter of Baguio took effect on September 1st, 1909. It is uh, very much evident that the social, economic, and political environment of Baguio City has drastically changed uh, 110 years since. There is a pressing and urgent need to revise our city's charter to enable its continuous growth in the midst of these dynamic times. And in response to the city's multitude of land issues and the growing concerns brought about by urbanization and development. These factual antecedents led to the consistent filing of bills seeking to revise the city's charter since the 13th Congress. In the 15th Congress, House Bill 3759 was approved by both chambers of Congress and submitted to then President Benigno S. Aquino III for his signature. The said enrolled bill, however, was vetoed by the President for impinging on the DNR's exclusive mandate over control and supervision of alienable and disposable public lands as well as for provisions directly in conflict with the Basis Conversion and Development Act insofar as they pertain to the disposition of properties transferred to BCDA. After thorough consultations and dialogues with resource persons, this proposed measure adopted the necessary changes to address the objections raised in the presidential veto. This proposal also allows for the creation of more responsive taxation system and revenue generating projects. With the active participation of my constituents and technical experts, this proposal seeks to ensure the future of Baguio and its residents. It is my hope that this legislative measure will finally pass into law within this 18th Congress. Toward this end, Mr. Chair, the immediate consideration and approval of this proposed measure is earnestly sought. Marami pong salamat at magandang umaga po. Agyaman up, uh, Congressman Go. Uh, uh, thank you. May we hear the 
opening statement of uh, Mayor Benji Magalong. Mayor Benji, if you're around. Tan Bago ka magsalita, Mayor, tanungin ko lang, pwede na bang pumunta sa Baguio? Pwede na po, Senator Talentino, Senator okay. Francis. Anytime mo, ako lang ako kayo rito. No? You have two choices. Kung pupunta ako kayo rito for leisure, please register po sa visita.bagyo.gov.ph. Kung official naman, you don't have to register. No? Pero mas maganda kung mag-register kayo sa hdfbagyo.gov.ph para meron kayong QR code para kung sakasali mabilis yung pag-process sa inyo. So hindi na po mayor i-quarantine pagdating sa... Ay, definitely sa... Oh, hindi na, <laughs> hindi na, Senator. So open na yung Session Road, open na yung Mines View Park, open na yung Katedral, open na yung yeah, PMA, Park, 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 Park. Si General De La Rosa sa PMA. Yes, we never we never close our parks. Uh, we never close our parks and our roads. In fact, um, Mr. Chair, tuli-tuli pa rin naman ang pag-open uh, ng aming uh, ng tourism industry since we opened in October. Nagkaroon lang kami ng mga certain uh, restrictions and border control measures nung nagkaroon tayo ng MECQ. Pero basically, inaalaw pa rin namin ang, ang mga turista to go up to the city of Baguio on certain conditions lang. So hopefully, February, meron ng Panagbenga Festival. Tuloy-tuloy na. Yes, hopefully. Oh, uh, tapos, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to vaccinate around 80 to 90 percent of our population before the end of this year because we bought our own, we bought our own vaccines. Congratulations. Mayor, you have the floor for your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat. And to Senator Aimee Marcos and to everyone present here today, especially Congressman Marco, who actually introduced the South Bill number 1900. So may we now present to you our position with regards to this House Bill number 1900. I would like also to inform the Chair that we have submitted our position paper to, to Congressman Mark and to Congressman Noel Villaneva. We have several items that we would like to discuss, and these are actually uh, some of the issues that uh, we would like to raise during this uh, discussion. One is on the proposed territorial boundaries. The proposed bill defines the territorial boundaries of the city of Baguio. The city respects the power of Congress to define the political boundaries of the municipal corporation. However, we would like to inform the, com the Committee on Dependency of the Negotiation with the Municipality of Tuba Benguet. The two local government units, specifically Baguio and Tuba, are already in the final stage of forging a memorandum of agreement involving the settlement or correction of political boundaries, particularly covering the areas of Poblacion Tuba, Benguet, and Barangay Santo Tomas, school area of the city of Baguio. Baguio and Tuba had long-standing boundary line disputes since 1927, as evidenced by petition opposition from then Tuba Mayor Wakat Suelio. Now let me go to the appointed officials of the city of, East, city of Baguio and we propose the following. One is the creation of the City Parks Management Office and the City Environment and Natural Resources Office. The creation of the City Parks Management Office and City Environment and Natural Resources Officer would split into hubs, the already existing City Environment and Parks Management Office, adding to the already con convoluted staffing pattern that the city government has not to mention the existing Office of the Community Environment and Natural Resources of the DENR, acting as steward of the city's environment and champion of its protection. Another is the creation of a solid or a city solid and liquid management office. Currently, the General Service Office through its Solid Waste Management Division is tasked with the solid and liquid waste management of the city. However, the Baguio Water District, being the agency responsible for water distribution, which is under the jurisdiction of the Water Council that administers the waters and enforces the provisions of the Water Code. And considering its knowledge and technical expertise in water management is more capacitated to undertake water waste or wastewater liquid management. The creation of a city agriculturist office is another aspect and we would like to highlight that we no longer require the creation of a city agriculturist office. And finally, on the creation of the city traffic management office, given the traffic issues that the city is experiencing, and this is probably one of our priorities uh, to address the traffic condition, especially during the pre-pandemic, there is a need to create a traffic management office which shall be headed by a city traffic engineer. Another is the composition of the Sangunian Panglungsod, 
the subject bill states that in addition thereto, there shall be three sectoral representatives, one from the women, another from representing representing the agriculture or industrial workers, and another member from the other sectors, including the urban poor, the IPs, RP communities, and persons with disabilities. The city is a highly urbanized city with a legislative body that has 12 elected and two ex official members. Adding that, adding three more sectoral representatives entail additional expense to the city, not only in terms of their salaries, but in terms of salaries of their staff, office space, and office supplies. We do not discriminate the women, the agriculture, industrial workers, the urban poor and persons with disability. However, it is our position that they are already well represented by members, both regular and expertise of the city council, particularly by the Standing Committee on Social Services, Women and Urban Poor, Committee on Market, Trade and Commerce and Agriculture, Committee on Employment, Livelihood and Cooperative and Persons with Disabilities. And finally, Mr. Chair, on the proposed merging of barangays at present, we have a total of 128 barangays in the city, and only 14 out of these 120, 128 barangays have the population of at least 5,000 inhabitants. Why am I so emphasizing these 5,000 inhabitants? Under Section 385 of the Republic Act of 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code, a barangay may be created, divided, so, merged, um, abolished, or its boundaries substantially altered by law so, or an yeah. ordinance um, of the SP or Sangguniang um, Pangkusod, subject to the approval by the majority of the CAS. It is required that in urban or highly urbanized areas, it, a barangay may be created out of a contiguous territory. And in urban areas and within Metro Manila and other political subdivisions with highly urbanized cities, such territories shall have a certified population of at least 5,000 inhabitants. For that matter, subject to the approval of the majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite to be conducted by the COMELEC and subject to the consolidation plan prepared by the Baguio City Government, barangays that fail to meet the 5,000 population requirement shall be abolished or merged. Now, looking at what, uh, looking at the recent review and uh, planning being done by our local government, I would like to inform the chair that from 128 barangays, we intend to reduce this to about 50 plus barangays, and the planning is still ongoing at the moment. I would also like to greet Senator Ronald Bato. Uh, we will see you uh, later this afternoon, uh, Senator Bato. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. And thank you for giving us this opportunity to, to discuss with you our manifestation. Thank you, uh, May Mayor Benji. I was I was canning the proposed uh, measure. Mr. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair. Hey, Congressman, go. Yes. Uh, uh, with, with your permission, I would like yes, yeah, to. Ahead, ahead. I'd like to react. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, as far as the boundary dispute uh, that we have right now with the municipality of Tuba, we did the amendment as proposed in the House uh, before the, we came out with the substitute bill. And the question uh, raised by uh, uh, our very good mayor is answered on section three of the substitute bill that we approved on third and final reading in the House of Representatives because it gives a uh, position uh, to the city to do the necessary negotiation with uh, the uh, municipality of Tuba. And as indicated uh, in, our, in the new substitute bill, uh, the foregoing provision it states shall be without prejudice to the resolution by the appropriate agency or forum of any boundary dispute or case involving questions of territorial jurisdiction between the city and the adjoining local government units, provided that the territorial jurisdiction of the disputed area or areas shall remain with the local government unit which has existing administrative supervision over said area or areas until the final resolution of the case. So uh, that answers actually the first question of uh, Mayor Magalong. 
uh, considering the fact that it was the same, uh, it was the same amendment that uh, we included uh, during the uh, final uh, version of this uh, particular bill. On the issue of the new departments that were uh, mentioned by uh, Mayor Magalong, these are the same amendments that he proposed uh, in the uh, in the House, and we have included some of this. Uh, we removed the position of the Agriculturist Office, but included the City Environmental and Resource Office and the City Solid Waste under Section 45 and 47 of uh, the bill that we have uh, approved uh, in the House. And also, uh, it was also uh, uh, provided for under uh, the, the new the substitute bill on the representatives uh, to the uh, City Council. We have removed the three uh, as per recommendation of uh, our very good mayor in the House. And we just included uh, one uh, coming from the indigenous uh, people uh, of the uh, city of Baguio. So yung tatlo, Mayor, uh, were already removed in the final version of the bill, which was approved in the House of Representatives. So yung concern ni Mayor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, has been addressed uh, in the final version of the bill. But the original bill that was filed, uh, House Bill 1900, which I filed, uh, did not comprehend his recommendation, but uh, in the final substitute bill, House Bill 828882, uh, incorporate uh, all the suggested provisions uh, in the final substitute bill, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Thank you, Congressman Go. Thank you, uh, thank you, Congressman. Take note, uh, DILG and DNR. I'll be, I'll be asking you later. So. To be clear, what is uh, at stake here is the revision of the Baguio City Charter. So number one, we talk of the 1909 uh, source of uh, Baguio's birthright. Number two, we talk of the local government code of 1991. And number three, we talk of uh, this measure. So the question coming from the chair is this. How different is the latest measure from the original measure, which will not overlap with the local government code, meaning to say, which would not be just a surplusage of the local government code? The DILG can perhaps answer this. Is there a, a need to conduct a plebiscite when we absorb, merge existing barangays, 128 to be exact, because the 129th barangay is the barangay Bagong Lipunan, which is just on, on paper, so they will reduce it to 50 or less. Is this, is this viable? Uh, is this a viable option to reduce? Because, uh, Mayor, uh, with all due respect, Congressman, in all other matters that this committee uh, tackled, they are for the splitting of barangays, creation of more barangays in Mindanao, in uh, Bulacan. Now, this is the first time I've encountered a measure which would merge barangays. Uh, existing <laughs> barangays will be merged, thereby lessening the number of barangay officials probably will have an effect on the internal revenue allotment and uh, reduce the political subdivisions within Baguio City. Uh, my question to DILG, DILG, uh, Yusek Echeberry. Uh, Mr. Chair, because before uh, yes. uh, uh, Yusek Echeberry, may I be permitted to give a Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. comment? Uh, in, in the proposed bill that uh, I submitted, uh, does not uh, it does not include the merging of uh, the barangays that we have in the city of Baguio, and I thought that it's just prudent that we separate this uh, from this particular bill. Uh, that's why we will propose a separate bill integrating 
or merging some of the barangays so that we can reduce the number from 158 to a certain number. Because at this point, uh, I think we are not yet ready to determine how many barangays that we should have. And as the mayor said, we need a little consultation and study on this, uh, Mr. Chair. Because I thought that's part of the measure under consideration. It will be a little bit messy to craft the delineation of boundaries. Uh, it will take time, uh, Congressman, considering that you're not just talking of uh, uh, geographical uh, uh, boundaries, demographic considerations will be taken into consideration. Even the presence of uh, our IPs probably will be affected. So, wala pala yon, Congressman. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So, uh, the, thank you, thank you, Mr. sir. DLG, can you answer? Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just manifest? Uh, uh, Mayor uh, Magalong, go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you. I agree with uh, Congressman Mark. Uh, if it will only complicate the uh, present bill that was uh, uh, he's uh, he's now uh, you know proposing eight, uh, particularly eight 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 two, and it will only uh, you know um, delay further its its approval. Then it's okay with that. It will have a separate bill uh, dealing with the uh, merging of the barangays, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Before Mr. Chair, uh, sorry, Senator Marcos. Uh, Senator Marcos, yes. you recognize, ma'am. Yes, I was just going to uh, support uh, what both the mayor and the congressman have said, both uh, Mark and Benji have said, and that is we are already fully aware of the very troubled and delayed history of this bill. It's uh, been a long time in coming, so if necessary, let us revise and simplify what we can. Um, as uh, the, uh, the uh, chairman is well aware, the traffic and growth and development in the Baguio area has been overwhelming and uh, a, uh, an authority in the uh, charter is absolutely necessary. Furthermore, the unique uh, history of land tenure and the IPs in the Cordillera also requires special uh, assistance, not only with the DENR, but also uh, with the other land registration groups, such as the DAR, such as as well the, um, um, the uh, land registration authorities. So with the NCIP, I think uh, this can all be uh, moved together, and this is certainly a step in the right direction. Simplehan na lang natin para mapaspasan na at uh, matapos na sa wakas itong revision ng city charter. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Marcos. I agree with you na simplehan na lang. Medyo makapal nga lang ito, ma'am. Uh, and perhaps we'd like to take the uh, opportunity of having BCDA. BCDA is around. We'd like to hear from BCDA, NCIP, and DNR before, before the ILG. And and Congressman Mark, perhaps you should likewise take note, with all due respect, recently approved laws uh, calling for the creation of a city cooperative office, uh, which should probably be incorporated here. And I will be asking later on why... Mr. Chair, it, yes. Mr. Chair, it's included in the... It's included. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's you, have the foresight, sir. you have the foresight, sir, coming from the highlands. Uh, what about the City Agricultural Office? Why was it? Uh, well, it was suggested uh, by our uh, city mayor uh, during the discussion that we had in the house and considering that uh, we didn't uh, have so much agricultural areas in the city of Baguio. And uh, I think that's the reason why this representation agreed that we delete that uh, position uh, in the uh, in uh, in the in this uh, pro uh, particular uh, bill that uh, we have submitted to the Senate, Mr. Chair. What about the vegetables, uh, Congressman? The vegetables uh, coming from outlying areas being transferred to Baguio. These are mostly coming from uh, the outlying areas outside of Baguio, Mr. Chair. Particularly La Trinidad, uh, you know, uh, Tuba, and other places uh, within these areas. Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you for that uh, clarification, Congressman Go. BCDA, are you around? We, we saw them logged in. BCDA. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Can you identify yourself, ma'am? Uh, although there's a name flash on the screen. 
Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Kalalo. Kalalo. Yes, Mr. Chair, this is uh, Gisela Kalalo and I'm from the Legal Department of the Basis Conversion and Development Authority. Any uh, connections on this, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we interpose no objection and uh, we express our support for the proposed bill, uh, noting that uh, it recognizes the jurisdiction uh, and authority or power of BCDA over the Camp John Hay, Mr. Chair. This is in keeping with uh, BCDA's mandate uh, or our, our BCDA's charter, which is uh, embedded in uh, Republic Act 7227. We also note that uh, the bill recognizes uh, the, uh, BCDA's role in the preservation of the city watersheds. Uh, Vested, which is which is also vested by um, RA seven two two seven. Again, Mr. Chair, we have no uh, objection on the proposed bill, and uh, we wish that the proposals or the proposed revisions, as uh, presented by the Jahi Management um, Corporation, which is the implementing body or implementing arm of the of BCDA, will be considered, Mr. Chair. Um, that will be all, Mr. Chair. If I may ask just one question, what is the role of a PCDA in so far as the previously known aggropation of a BLIST is concerned? I'm referring to the Baguio, La Trinidad, Itogon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublay. Uh, what is the role of the, the BCDA and what will be the effect on your role relative to BLIST once this bill is approved. Is he there or is he still around? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I request uh, my uh, colleague, um, Attorney uh, Ronald uh, Kahuko, to uh, uh, give his thoughts on the attorney Ronald. Okay. Maybe recognize Mr. Chair. Yes, identify yourself, sir. Ah, CDA Ronald Kahuko. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. This is, I'm also part of the legal department. Uh, if I may just clarify the question, Mr. Chair, that what are the what 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 is the expected implication as far as BCD is concerned on the proposed aggropation of these bleached territory, sir? Correct, you're correct. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, as far Buhay as BCD pa ba yung is... Buhay pa ba yung bleached? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, um, it's it's an agglomeration of the uh, of Baguio City and it's outlying uh, the outlying municipalities, uh, adjacent municipalities of Benguet. It's uh, it is a very informal organization at the moment, Mr. Chair. And and this is uh, being recognized and uh, supported by the BDC, BCDA, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, at, at the moment, Mr. BCDA. Uh, sa ngayon ho, wala ho kaming masyadong uh, relationship with BCDA. Um, ang 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 uh, direction po ng strategic uh, focus po ng uh, BLIS now is for to come up with a master plan covering Baguio City and the adjacent municipalities. But the moment is still not formalized, uh, totally formalized, Mr. Chair. Considering the fact that we are still waiting for the uh, uh, passage of approval of the bill uh, creating the BLIS uh, uh, Development Authority. Mr. Chair. Congressman Go, sir. Yeah, uh, I think it's already in your committee, the uh, Bliss Development Authority that uh, we have approved in the House. It's also, of course, sponsored by the, this representation. So probably your question uh, can be answered when we tackle the Bliss Development Authority that is now pending in the Senate, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman, for reminding us. I think we just uh, received that. Last month, last month before the break, and uh, it it is similar to the Metro Davao Development Authority. Sort of, so, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so not jumping the gun. I think there has to be a direct correlation and cohesion with what 
we are tackling here right now and the next measure so the the good congressman can probably uh apprise us in 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 a in a shorter a bridge version is there going to be a conflict how will how will one help one another or uh can can we can we ensure that the the, the bliss with 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 baguio at the helm uh would would not in any way impinge on this uh revised charter of baguio will it uh, will it be coherent uh, yes it will be uh aligned uh, mr chair uh uh, one of the major provisions of that bill is we recognize the autonomy of the various uh, uh, municipalities in the city of Baguio once this uh, bill is approved uh, into law. Uh, second, uh, the most important function of this uh, development authority is to coordinate uh, the various functions and uh, works that cannot be done by one uh, uh, municipality or the city of Baguio and uh, we would like also to synergize the resources of the various cities uh, city and municipalities so that we can really develop the entire area and uh, this is very important uh, but before we can uh, do that we feel that we need to strengthen first the different municipalities uh, Mr. Chair and of course the city of Baguio and this uh, effort of revising the city charter is aligned with the, the overall objective of the Bliss Development Authority. Thank you, Congressman Go. I, I was informed it was uh, sent to us May 27, uh, just a week ago. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank I'm excited with this measure because probably you've, you've monitored the Dabao bill a while ago. Yes, uh, I so did. It's, um, sir. it's more uh, synchronized with my uh, previous life, life, life lifestyle and a previous life as MMDA chairman, uh, Congressman Go. So we'll support this measure, uh, definitely. So remind ko lang po si, si Mayor Benji Magalong and, and the good Congressman likewise. I, I heard of uh, efforts to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Tuba municipality uh, in terms of the boundary disputes uh, I I can relate to you my previous experiences. Natapos na po yung stint ko sa MMDA. Hindi pa ho tapos yung hablahan ng Makati at Tagig. Mm -hmm. Hindi pa ho tapos yung kaso ng Pateros at ng Makati. Uh, ito po yung, yung sa mga kampo natin. Ito yung sa mga areas ng Kumembo, Pembo, sa Supreme Court na matagal po yun. I, I glance at a provision here uh, with respect to boundary disputes that I think it's, uh, I forgot the section, section three, territorial dis boundaries, uh, the foregoing provision shall be without prejudice to the resolution by the appropriate ag agency or forum, and probably referring to courts of any boundary dispute or case involving questions of territorial jurisdiction between the city and adjoining local government units. So you're referring now to the Tuba uh, issue. Uh, just thinking out loud, I think it will take it will take uh, years if you will not have a, a friendly counterpart there. Uh, if there is going to be a court dispute, this will be a headache for the years ahead. Uh, Mayor, so dapat siguro uh, as a friendly, uh, as an advice, this should be resolved sooner, uh, Mayor. And I, I think the blist effort would probably be a good bridge to solve that because Tuba is included. Tama po ba yun, uh, Congressman? Yes, yeah, tama po yun. Can I manifest? Sir. Tama po yun. Sir, can I also manifest? Mayor Magalong? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, um, we have a very different uh, behavior po rito sa Cordillera. The good thing is uh, very civil po kami ng tuba at hindi po kami nagahablaan. Kaya mas maganda po yung aming relasyon at I believe we will be able to resolve this uh, because we have very good uh, favorable developments in the past uh, several months po na ongoing po yung negotiation namin. So taking off from your uh, advice po, Mr. Chair, that's assured po na we will fast track the negotiation. Thank you po. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can handle that. 
Mr. Chair, I think our Vice Mayor would like to say something, Mr. Chair. Vice Mayor? <laughs> Vice Mayor. BCDA, wala na tayong problema, no? No, no, no opposition here from BCDA? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, no opposition, and we support the bill, Mr. Chair, the proposed bill. Thank you, Paul. Although BCDA, the, the previous presidential veto prominently mentioned BCDA. So, okay lang yan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank um, you, Paul. So we go to the Vice Mayor of Baguio City and then yes, to DNR. Yes. And then probably... Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Vice Senator Mayor. Uh, Senator Bato uh, and uh, Senator Marcos. I think the City Council, because <clears throat> we will be submitting our position paper to your office, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. So that is the stand of uh, the council as to BCDA and as to some provisions of uh, the proposed bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, Chair. Vice Mayor, can we you submit that to uh, Vice Mayor? mayor. Mr. Who Chair. is trying to be recognized? Mr. Chair. Uh, Councillor Bag Pagan. Yes, Councillor, uh, you're supporting your Vice Mayor or you're opposing your Vice Mayor? Uh, I am I am uh, si Benji niyan. I am supporting uh, uh, actually that was what I was uh, about also to say Mr. Chairman that we be given a period of time to submit our position paper but uh, on the issue of the uh, territorial boundaries I agree with Mayor Magalong uh, regarding the, the possible uh, settlement of the boundary dispute as actually uh, Mr. Chair, in the proposed bill that was submitted, which was uh, approved by both Congress, and was submitted to the uh, to President Aquino, which he which he vetoed, there was already incorporated in that uh, uh, in that bill the, the, the ter territorial area, which was the product of an, of an agreement between Toba and ba in Baguio. So I do not. Uh, so I would. I could easily see the possibility of uh, the city government in Tuba coming out with an agreement regarding this uh, issue, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Siguro pagtulong-tulungan na para mabilis. Uh, salamat, yes. po, salamat po, Konsihal. Uh, Finally, can we have a D DNR? Uh, are you around? DNR? Uh, Ms. Uh, Obina Serapio or uh, from the... Environmental Management Bureau, Elvira Panspausing, Pansing, DNR. Wala pong representative ang DNR. Nakalagin ba ang DNR? Pero Mr. Chair, nandito si, uh, si R.D. Ralph. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh... Regional Director, sige po. Ito po yung tanong namin. Para, pa, diretso na tayo and then uh, we'll need the reaction coming from Congressman Go and, and perhaps uh, Senator De La Rosa, yung dati pong measure and act revising the, the Charter of Baguio City, House Bill 3759, uh, was vetoed 2013. So, diretsahin ko na po ito. Ang nakalagay po kasi doon sa dating measure, eh pwedeng ibenta yung alienable and disposable lands ng... <laughs> ng uh, ang kikitain ay hindi po pupunta sa National Treasury kung hindi po pupunta sa lunsod ng bagyo. Dito po ba sa bagong measure natin ay naiwasan natin yung ganong issue at kung ibebenta po yung uh, ilang alienable and disposable lands ay saan po mapupunta? May DBM ba rito? Wala. DBM, you can react. And uh, what's the position of the DNR uh, uh, relative to this new house bill? Sir, uh, you, sir. regional director? We, 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 we don't propose as regards the disposition of alienable and disposable. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, to all the uh, honorable uh, officials in the loop. Okay? So as regards to Article 10, uh, this is Baguio Town Site Preservation and Watersheds. 
particularly on uh, section 49 alienable and disposable lands uh, it says here that all alienable and disposable lands within Baguio town site reservation shall be disposed of and awarded by the department of environment and natural resources through the grant of residential free patent town site sales and other modes of disposition pursuant to republic act number 10023 otherwise known as the Res residential free patent act okay uh, it says here that the free patent act only but uh, we suggest that uh, we include uh, the term the the word residential free patent because the law that was specified here is Resid uh, Re republic act 10023 which is entitled residential free patent act okay Commonwealth Act 141, otherwise known as the Public Land Act, and such other laws authorizing the disposition of the lands to qualified occupants, actual occupants therein. But uh, we suggest here that, um, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we, um, uh, we maintain this one, okay? based on uh, how it was Director, worded. Uh, okay? If I may interrupt, did you submit a yes. position paper? Yeah, actually, we uh, no, we uh, we commented on all the the provisions of uh, when, the when was that? When was that? March. Uh, we March. submitted this last morning March. Daw, director. Kaya pala no, hindi ko nabasa. It, we received yes, uh, that uh, your position paper just this morning. No, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, we uh, submitted March. that last March. Okay. Uh, last March. And, uh, we, we, we just resubmitted it. Okay. We just resubmitted it because uh, yesterday I was called by. Uh, uh the secretary to uh, resubmit okay so palagay okay. ko ngayon lang kasi ngayon lang tayo naghihirim but go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah so um, the application uh, on the next paragraph pertaining to section 49 the application of republic act number 10023 shall always con uh, consider the zoning ordinance of the city uh city land use plan hence alienable and disposable lands of public uh land covered by town site sales application filed with the dnr covering areas um not, it says here exceeding 200 square meters but uh, we recommend that that uh, it is suggested that it should be uh, worded as area of less than 200 square meters and the word more or less must be deleted okay? And it's also uh, suggested, I mentioned a while ago that uh, the word residential be inserted before the word free patent because we have uh, existing uh, law pertaining yeah, to free here, patent agriculture. It's here yeah. naman, residential free patent. Uh, the DNR through the grant of residential free patent, comma, towns, town site sales, or other modes of disposition, pursuant to Republic yes, yes. 10023. It's, it's, it's here now. So the bill yes. coming from uh, Congressman Go. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, because uh, the, the bill that uh, uh, we received is uh, there was no mention about uh, residential free patent. Baka, baka luma just, po yun, sir. Baka luma. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I, uh, 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 yung bill na po namin, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Director Pablo, if you look at section 49, line 27, line 27. residential free patent, doon nakasulat yun. Okay, noted, uh, Honorable Congressman Go. Okay. So DNR, do you have an objection here? Kasi ang, ang, uh, my question is this. Kaya na veto yung dati kasi ang, naka, ang nakalagay doon yung, yung sales, yung funds generated would not accrue to the National Treasury. So in this bill, silent naman. Wala naman nakalagay dito kung saan mapupunta, kung may nabenta. So is this going to be uh, controversial on the part of DNR or uh, okay lang sa inyo to. But my question to Congressman Go, pag nagbenta ng lupa, saan mapupunta yung proceeds? Sa City of Baguio o sa National Treasury? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the veto message of the President, Mr. Chair, uh, is not clear who is going to uh, do the uh, uh, sale uh, it can be the DNR and uh, the city of Baguio. 
but in this particular bill that we filed, we corrected this uh, uh, provision by stating very clearly that the one uh, as provided for in Section 49, it will be DNR that will have the sole authority to dispose uh, these uh, types of land and it just simply follows that once they are given the authority to do the sale, uh, automatically they will be the one to, uh, it will go to the coffers of the national government, itong proceed ng sale of this alienable and disposable lands. Mr. So Chair. no shares to uh, on, on, uh, accruing on the part of Baguio City? Dapat may shares din po ang Baguio. The practice is magbayad sila sa city. Well, if there is a proposal uh, agree, and it will be agreed, uh, supported by DNR, I think we, we don't have any objection, uh, Mr. Chair. DNR, are you amenable to that? Pag yung nag nagbenta ng lupa, dapat may share yung bagyo. Kasi they will, they will be shouldering, carrying the burden in so far as the social costs. Uh, you have to relocate uh, tenants, you have to uh, apply your zoning laws, etc., etc. So, are you amenable to that? Do you speak? Can you speak on behalf of DNR? Dapat yeah, Mr. Chair, Baguio City. Yeah, Mr. Chair, actually, what is uh, uh, the current practice is that uh, once the application is uh, pertaining to uh, town site application, then the uh, the proceed will. Uh, go to the coffers of the city government. But if the application is free patent, then uh, uh, all the fees will uh, accrue to the to the DNR and to the national government. Okay? That's the actual practice because uh, there is also that uh, uh, application of the town site uh, reservation uh, law, okay? the TSA uh, town site reservation uh, law. Okay? Uh, director, liwanagin mo lang ito. Medyo na, yes. na nahilo ko ng konti doon. Yung town site application law, basically, anong, anong sinasabi noon? Ang sinasabi noon, sir, uh, no, uh, because Baguio is uh, proclaimed as uh, a town site reservation and it falls under the classification of uh, the so-called civil reservation as distinguished from military reservation. And um, the disposition of town site is being done by uh, by uh, virtue of uh, exec, uh, no, uh, administrative order uh, 504, okay, issued by uh, uh, the then uh, president uh, during the time of President Marcos. And uh, the composition of that 504 is uh, the mayor of the city of Baguio, the DNR secretary, and the land management bureau director, wherein. Uh, uh, the process okay, uh, will be uh, will be assessed by this uh, committee, and including the amount okay, that uh, will be paid by uh, the the beneficiary. Okay, and uh, all these proceeds will go to the coffers of the city. And al alam nyo, medyo kinulang ata uh, ang ano dito. Your your even even areas within the Camp Janhe Reservation can be included. Tama po ba, Director? Tama po ba, Director? Segregated from the town site. It is already, uh, Your Honor, uh, it is already segregated from the ta town site reservation, the, the Camp John Hay. Okay? Alam nyo, ang kulang natin dito, dapat napa-attend natin yung DISHUD, uh, the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development should be, should be included because there is now a new law, Republic Act 11, 201, which amends Republic Act 11201, dated July 2018, which amends all uh, existing laws in conflict with the Dishud Law. So, siguro, uh, just to advise uh, the good mayor and even DNR, in future discussions, the Dishud, the Department of Human Settlement, should be uh, included in the table because they, they, they are now supposed to spearhead any new town site development, any new housing project, any new urban planning, zoning project, etc., etc. 
So, to synchronize all of this, even the future list, isama natin, isama nyo po, yung disyud, sina General Del Rosario, yung, yung opisina nila, para para synchronize po lahat, uh, Director, because the, the, the new law, RA11201, was crafted precisely to address all of these matters, because the township, the, the, your, your, your law, your, the, the, the principle you cited was way, way back, American time yun eh. Diba? Yung RNR itong, lagi kong binabanggit Mayor Ian Bagyo kasi si Howard Tapp, nakakabayo lang dyan nung umaakyat. Pati yung pinopropagate ko yung si Francis Burton Harrison may, sa baba ng Session Road ni Harrison Street, yung FB Harrison Street. So, I think in, in your future uh, discussions, uh, if we approve this, this should, should be uh, invited. Nandito ba yung dishod ngayon? Ah, umalis na. Okay. Oo. Kasi ang, ang dishod will play a, a big role, uh, Mayor, in, in, in the implementation of your new charter uh, relative to housing and uh, other zoning uh, development. Because a lot of zoning zoning words were mentioned in, in, the, in, in your law. In your proposed law. Debate Yun lang po, Director. Uh, wala kayong objections dito sa ano? Walang objections, Director? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, wala kaming objections, sir. Uh, I look lang forward to reading nga. your position paper. Ngayon ko lang umaga, sir, na nakita yon. Finally, can we have uh, NCIP? Are, are, are they around? Director, Attorney Pahutag. Pa uh, from the NCIP. Sir, Attorney Andy R.D. Pahutag, NCIP. Uh, good afternoon po, sir, ma'am, and uh, chair. Any comments on this measure? Um, uh, sir, may, may I call on uh, Attorney Gillian, Attorney Adrian, good go ahead, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Ma'am? Mr. Chair? Good, ma'am. Mr. Chair, good good morning po sa lahat. Um, this is Rizabel Aguilar from the Legal Affairs Office of the NCIP. Um, Your Honors, uh, the NCIP appreciates the intent of the bill, especially with the inclusion of the NCIP in the Special Committee on, the, on Lands as uh, set forth in Section 51 of the proposed bill. However, Mr. Chair, on the specific provision of the bill, may we we would like to request for uh, ample time to be able to submit our official position paper as we are still coordinating with our counterparts in the uh, CAR for the uh, drafting of the position paper, Mr. Chair. The soonest part we will submit. Thank you. Ma'am, initially, initially, top of your mind, what will be, what will be, uh, the contents of your position paper, objections, support, or uh, any controversies that you perceive that can arise uh, insofar as our cultural communities are concerned? Uh, Mr. Chair, initially po, we would like, siguro po, Mr. Chair, on the matter of Section 53 regarding ancestral lands. So we don't po siguro mag uh, revolve yung aming concerns, Mr. Chair. So, precisely the question coming from the Chair is how how the principles of informed, prior consent uh, will be encapsulated in Section 53. Pasok naman siguro. Uh, Ma'am, tama po ba yun? Yun lang naman ang gusto nyong insure eh, na yung ating mga kapatid na IPs ay hindi maapektuhan. Tama po ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, and that our the rights of our IPs will be uh, protected as well, Mr. Chair. Chris Thank Mando, you, Mr. Can you initially react on the comments coming from N NCIP? They, yeah. they would uh, want a clearer Section 53, perhaps. Yeah, I think the Section 53, Mr. Chair, is very clear that uh, 
Republic Act, uh, pursuant to Republic Act 8371 or the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act of 1997, legitimate ancestral lands are considered private properties or lands and are not part of the Baguio Town Site Reservation. That is a very clear statement protecting the ownership uh, uh, of uh, ancestral lands that are claimed by legitimate uh, individuals. And uh, this, the next paragraph clearly also spells out the applications covering lands which are subject to pending ancestral claims before the NCIP shall not be processed and shall not be acted upon pursuant to this act from the moment that the said ancestral land claims have been denied with finality by proper court, government agency, or instrumentality. So if there are pending claims, ancestral land claims, uh, and have already been decided with finality, then there is no more basis for the claim. But if there are no final decision yet on these claims, these claims will continue to be heard by the NCIP. So in that sense, uh, in both uh, provisions, uh, the rights and the privileges of indigenous peoples under the IPRA law of 1997 are protected here, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Go. Ma'am, uh, you heard the reply of Congressman Go. Are you satisfied with that? Because it's nasite naman dito yung uh, pursuant to Republic Act 8371, otherwise known as the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act of 1997. Na nasite naman po dito. So talagang map mapuprotektahan din yung mga IPs natin. Nakikinig si Senator Bato, ma'am. Si Senator Bato yung nagtulak kahit yung sa height limitation, yung mapasok na sa police, sa Bureau of Fire, yung, yung ating mga katutubo na... Five, five feet na sa female, five two sa, sa lalaki. So, palagi ko, covered naman lahat yung ano. That's, that's just a, an off-tangent remark. Uh, Ma'am, can you, can you reply to that uh, comment of Congressman Go? Yes po, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, may we... May we just uh, submit our official position paper, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Uh, we'll be expecting your position paper next week. Can you do that? And and when you do that, uh, since Section 58 mentions the bliss, you also include, incorporate in your position paper the municipalities of La Trinidad, Itogon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublay, not just Baguio City. Yes, well, Mr. Chair. However, we generally support the bill, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, okay naman po sa inyo. Ito lang maprotektahan yung IP. Yes, po, Mr. Chair. So, thank you, NNCIP. I, I think we have uh, covered this uh, lengthily. There are just uh, three. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. Who's, who's uh, speaking? Uh, Councilor Pagbagan, Mr. Chair. Yes, Kusial, Kusial. I I would like to support mo talaga si Vice Mayor, ha? <laughs> of course naman. Is is our hagabul Vice Mayor. But uh, regarding section Sorry. 53, uh, Mr. Chair, I think that uh, with due respect to our congressman who is a uh, who we respect very much. I think that uh, there is an internal contradiction there. Because uh, and especially in the light of the uh, latest jurisprudence, uh, in the case of uh, Republic, Republic of the Philippines versus uh, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, uh, in GR number 208480, I think that uh, we, we have to study this uh, proposed provision, uh, Mr. Chair, because uh, uh, I am. I am an. You're referring uh, to Section 53. That's yes, the IP. Mr. So, I am an indigenous uh, member of the indigenous people, but uh, based on the existing laws, I think that uh, uh, it's very clear that uh, the Baguio City's townsite reservation shall remain to be part of the townsite reservation unless classified by Congress. Congress, and according to this decision penned by Justice Carpio. 
the, the NCIP cannot transgress this clear legis legislative intent. So I would just like to make this off record, Mr. Chair, so that we will be guided uh, properly. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Certified by Congressman Go, Section 53 uh, respects even the private properties or lands not part of the Baguio Town Site Reservation. Tama po ba yon? So Yes, Mr. Chair. Your apprehension probably can be covered by that uh, line. Un legitimate ancestral lands are considered private properties. Uh, Mr. Chair. But just the same, uh, Congressman Go, you're trying to say something. Yeah, I, I think I just would like to repeat uh, what I stated earlier, uh, that uh, legitimate ancestral lands are considered private properties or lands. Uh, and that if uh, uh, there are claims that were finally uh, decided by the proper court with the court, government agency, or instrumentality with finality, then there is no reason why they should continue the claim. You lang naman, eh, it's very clear. Uh, uh, once they are not yet finally decided by the appropriate court uh, with finality, then uh, the claims will still continue. Y yun, yun ang, uh, maliwanag dito. So we protect. Uh, there is due process in, in, in this particular provision, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. I think uh, we have clarified uh, everything. I, I still have to tackle another item in the agenda. It's, it has something to do with, uh, likewise, with LGUs having their own integrated uh, sanitary landfills after, after this item. Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, Chair, who's trying to speak? Uh, this is President Alan Garcia of uh, Camp John Hay. John uh, Hay yes, sir. Uh, we were, we're trying to get in touch with you a while ago. You have anything to uh, add, uh, Mr. Garcia? Well, Mr. Chair, as the implementing arm of uh, BC, can you come closer to the microphone, sir? Uh, can you hear me now, clear, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. First, uh, may I greet my Kabalen uh, uh, Congressman Go. A very, a good, uh, very, very good afternoon. And uh, my my uh, mayor, Mayor Magalong, uh, Senator uh, De La Ro Bato De La Rosa, and the uh, ever beautiful Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, Mr. Chair, as the implementing arm of uh, BCDA, I just want to manifest my alignment with their own manifestation that uh, uh, they fully support and they interpose no ejection, uh, they interpose no uh, uh, objection, objection uh, to the bill, to both bills uh, of the House and the Senate. We f and we fully support both bills by uh, our uh, good congressman and uh, Senator uh, Aimee Marcos. That is our position. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we already sent our position uh, yesterday. And however, we, we will uh, be uh, uh, resending it and uh, do some minute uh, revisions on it and uh, the soonest possible time uh, Mr. Chair Honorable Chairman you will receive uh, the position paper of uh, John Hay Management Corporation thank you sir. thank you thank very you, much Mr. Garcia. can you submit that by next week uh, similar to the uh, instructions I gave a while ago uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we will, we will send it, uh, definitely we will send it uh, next week. But, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity given uh, to JHMC in expressing its uh, manifestation uh, about this uh, uh, acts, uh, the bills uh, revising the uh, charter of the city of Baguio to both bills, Senate and the House bill. Uh, the, the, these bills have our full support, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Garcia. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Upon instructions of my other colleagues, uh, this committee 
without objection on the part of Senator uh, De La Rosa, is now inclined, subject to the fine-tuning of several provisions, notably Section 3, as regards the boundaries, Section 6, as regards the officials of the city of Baguio, Section 48, as regards the board and councils, Section 10, a bit about the Baguio town site reservation and watersheds, Section 12, a bit about the Camp Jan Hay reservation, and Section 53, pending receipt of the position paper coming from NCIP, the committee would convene a technical working group to fine-tune some of the provisions the chair just mentioned while we wait for the position papers coming from DNR, NCIP, BCDA, and perhaps uh, the city council, as mentioned by the vice mayor, and the Camp John Hay authorities. But the, without objections on the part of my other colleagues, the committee is approving the measure subject to a technical working group refinement, most probably with the permission of Senator Bato de la Rosa, we can conduct a TWG refinement in Baguio City. If uh, Mayor Magalong would welcome us there uh, within the break so we can finish this. Uh, Senator de la Rosa is uh, having his uh, thumbs up mark because he wants to go to the... Oren, Oren. And Senator Marcos, likewise, <laughs> would want to, to visit uh, Baguio City. Oren. So, if there is a motion to that effect coming from Senator De La Rosa? Yes, with that, I uh, move that uh, a technical, that we proceed towards our technical working group uh, to be conducted with a hearing in Baguio City itself. I second the motion, Mr. Chairman, second the motion. Senator, I, may, may I suggest uh, if you can approve in principle the bill subject to amendments uh, and style uh that will be arrived at in a technical working group uh, madam chair i mean uh, mr chair yes uh yep. congressman go and to comprise the the technical working group will be members of this committee the city of baguio perhaps through a uh, the legal officer the psa the land management bureau the dilg the office of congressman go the BCDA and Camp John Hay authorities. So the motion is approved. The bill, the bill is approved. It will be sent to the plenary after the completion of the TWG. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You. Thank you, resource thank persons. You. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. This will take just. This will be a breeze of uh, 10 minutes. This is the local government. I, I hope the city council members of Baguio can, can listen for a while, stay for a while. This is a, a bill amending the local government code, uh, which would, which would uh, which would enable uh, LGUs to to coordinate their integrated solid waste collection system, as well as uh, establish basic solid waste facilities, including waste to energy facilities. The first bill, the first bill was uh, proposed by Senator Bong Revilla. Uh, it, it's it's a it's entitled an act to institutionalize basic service of integrated solid waste collection and disposal in all local government units, amending for the purpose RA-7160 of the local government code. The second bill, Senate Bill 1011, an act amending Republic Act 7160 of the local government code for the purpose of enhancing the power of LGUs in waste management and for other purposes authored by this representation. So. Uh, I think the DNR, the, the LG, 
the Department of uh, in Energy, the DOST, they're still around. Uh, may we hear your positions on this? Or if you have position papers. Basically, the amendment would call for uh, the addition of integration of uh, solid waste collection. Problema din po yan sa Baguio, problema po kahit saan yan. And for highly urbanized cities, and that, that would include Baguio, and I quote the proposal, the establishment of environmentally sound waste management systems, including waste to energy facilities that covers reduction, segregation, recycling, reuse, disposal, conversion of waste into useful resources through loans, grants, capital investments, partnerships, and joint ventures with both private and public institutions or entities, whether domestic or international, without sovereign guarantee for conceptualization, establishment, operation, and maintenance of state-of-the-art waste management facilities. So this would answer not just the exponential growth of waste, but even the accommodation of post-pandemic medical waste, including our face shields, face masks, etc., etc. So may we, may we ask the comments from DNR thereafter the ILG? The NR is still around. Uh, Ms. Ms. Hovina Serapin. Yeah. With the permission of my colleagues. Good morning po, sir. Uh, good good morning. afternoon po, uh, uh, Good sir. afternoon. Uh, sorry, wala akong pa lunch kasi magkakalayo tayo. So good afternoon po, Mr. Chair, and to all of our um, honorable uh, senators, uh, congressmen, and representatives from different agencies, as well as my colleagues from the DNR. Sir, um, I think we have not yet uh, submitted the official uh, position paper, but um, for our initial uh, comment on the through uh, on the two uh, draft uh, proposed bills, first, sir, uh, uh, sa proposed bill six nine five, introduced by Senator Ramon Bong Revilla. Uh, sir, uh, is it um? Can we uh, suggest or request that uh, it is not only an integrated solid waste collection and disposal, but since RA 903 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 requires an integrated approach uh, from the segregation at source, a separate collection or a segregated collection, uh, materials recovery, recycling, treatment and disposal, so that it will not, uh, so that it will not be limited uh, to collection and disposal only. So we suggest or we request that all components of the solid waste management uh, system uh, provided under RA 903 be integrated also in this uh, draft uh, bill, uh, Mr. Chair. So and, when do uh, you expect your position paper on this, uh, DNR? Yes, we can draft it uh, today, sir, and uh, maybe we can. Uh, Submitted by Monday or tomorrow to the Senate. Committee, ma'am, to the committee. Uh, to the committee, pa. Uh, and also for the for the uh, for the SB one zero one one by Honorable uh, Francis Tolentino, sir, uh, amending RA seventy one sixty, other otherwise known as the Local Government Code of nineteen ninety one. Sir, um, in support to this, we have already, the DNR have already um, issued the guidelines governing the waste to energy facilities for the integrated management of municipal solid waste. So um, may we request or may we recommend uh, the committee, uh, is, it, is it okay to integrate the provisions uh, in this um, DAO so that it will be consistent with the the that thou issued uh, on waste to energy for uh, municipal solid waste, or if it is okay with the committee. Can you submit that soonest? Because the, the Senate now is on its uh, second reading of a waste to energy law. And it is very timely because we are experiencing brownouts, not just in Luzon, but even in Visayas and Mindanao, and waste to energy facilities are now state of the art and would really help uh, in our economic recovery, especially uh, with the redundant brownouts we are experiencing 
right now. So we expect you. your Thank position you. paper Thank by you. next week, uh, this this week, ma'am, Monday, the the latest. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We can provide the um, position paper uh, not later than uh, Monday. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, uh, DNR. Mr. Uh, Chair, can I manifest? Yes, uh, yeah. Mayor Magalong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just would like to inform, uh, uh, Ms. I inform uh, Mr. Chair that Baguio City, together with its partners in the Blist area, is pursuing, aggressively pursuing its waste to energy project. And we're working closely with uh, the, the team of uh, PNOC together with DOE. And uh, we're now coordinating also with DNR, particularly with the office of Secretary Simatu. In fact, we're supposed to have a meeting this weekend to discuss further and to meet with the technology partner and together with the ambassador of Finland who will affirm the reputation of the technology provider that is Palmet. Ang problema lang dito, Mr. Chair, is yung tagal ng pag-process ng permits. Alam nyo, pag sa ECC pa lang, inaabot na ako kagad yan ng two years. I have my own personal experience with the with uh, the application and uh, securing the ECC. So if I may suggest, Mr. Chair, dapat po sana, pagdating sa mga waste to energy project, I would suggest po that dapat automatic po na i-declare po to na uh, project of national significance so that we will be able to fast track, expedite the issuance of the necessary permits. Otherwise, while we are very aggressive, it will take us two years, three years before we get all these permits. Dahil napaka-tedious po ng kanilang mga process. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Without the comments of the good mayor, I agree na talagang matagal niya. Matagal. Yung ibang ang, uh, foreign partners na gustong pumunta sa ibang probinsya, eh sila na yung sumusuko sa tagal ng... Ang dami na napirmahan, wala pa nangyayari kasi doon sa nabanggit mong mga uh, environmental certificates na natatagalan. So we note that, uh, Mayor Magalong. May we Thank ask you, the, the ILG uh, if you're still around? Senator Bato, huwag muna ako iwan. Malapit na to. Kadyot na lang, sir. Uh, konti na lang. <laughs> Senator De La Rosa, you'd like to add something? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, in addition to the comment of uh, Mayor Magalong, uh, baka pwedeng tingnan ng uh, DNR yung ating mga atong ating uh, policy direction ng uh, gobyerno yung ease of doing business. Tingnan niyo yung ease of doing business natin, kailangan natin 'yan. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Yes, yes. ALG, uh, may we hear you? Uh you said it's very is he still around? The regional director of DILG is around. Anong region to? Car o Davao sa region? Marami tayong DILG kanina. Car, car. DILG? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, yes uh, good afternoon to our uh, Honorable Senator uh, and to Senator Bato and Senator uh, Aini and to all uh, who are on board. So the DILG, we have submitted our position paper, uh, Senator, and uh, the DILG car supports the passage of the Baguio uh, City Charter. And of course, we would just like to add a provision on the filling up of temporary vacancies at the level of the Sangonian due to the lack of provision of RA 7160 relative to the filing of temporary vacancies in local elective positions. Administrative order number 15 series of 2018 was promulgated. And pursuant to the aforementioned temporary vacancy in the office of local chief executive, is filled up in accordance with the filing of uh, permanent vacancies under the local government code. However, temporary vacancies in the offices of the vice mayor and the Sangguniang Panlungsod and Sangguniang Barangay shall be filled by designation by the president through the Secretary of the Interior and Local Government. And sir, so as, not, uh, so as to ensure continuity in the aforementioned positions, it is suggested that the same be already addressed by the proposed charter. This is in line with uh, House Bill number 88, uh, 8882, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Department of Energy, are you around? DOE? Secretary Kusi, the friend of uh, General De La Rosa. 
Secretary Pusi, are you around? Yes, Mr. Theory. Chair. Uh, good, yes. good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, uh, Ruby this is Ruby de Guzman. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Department of Energy uh, fully supports uh, the proposed uh, uh, legislation, as this would uh, address the the, the uh, solid waste disposal uh, in the country. And uh, we commend. Mam, uh, yes, yung tanong ni Mayor Magalong. Paano makakatulong kaya ang DOE para mapabilis yung yung ang dami mga clearance na kailangan lumabas bago magsimula yung proyekto? How can uh, DOE be of help? Di ba ba kayong interagency ng DNR? Uh, a memorandum of sorts na isa na lang ang paper ma para tapos na. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the uh, on the clearance and permitting requirements uh, the doe has this uh, energy virtual one-stop shop uh, system or evos that was uh, passed into law uh, i think that was two years ago and it was already uh, operationalized so uh, all government agencies uh, that are required for this uh, permitting uh, the application will be lodged through the evos system not only with the OE, but uh, General Magalong, a copy of the whatever IRR you have there para to guide us accordingly. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Ruby. Chair. So yes, it's Mr. not Chair. just the DNR, but the DOE has a one-stop shop which includes the DNR. Yes, Mr. Chair, along with other government agencies. Actually, so that answer Senator De La Rosa's one-stop shop question a while ago. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, it's the it's a, the the EVOS law was uh, uh, authored by uh, the the Energy Committee Chairman uh, Senator Gatchalian. Yeah, and it's already operationalized, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. But with this measure uh, amending the local government code allowing waste to energy, what is the position of the DOE? Uh, we we Mr. Chair, we fully support this proposed legislation. And we will be submitting our position uh, paper, our comments once uh, this is uh, signed by the uh, uh, signatory, authorized signatory, Mr. Chair. Secretary Kusi. Uh, it's I think uh, for the uh, it's a, uh, Assistant Secretary uh, Ergisa in behalf of the secretary. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for supporting you. this initiative that will help our LGUs. Uh, what yeah. about the OST? Are thank you, you Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ruby. What about Department of Science and Technology? Are you still around? Hello, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm the measures here filed by this representation and uh, Senator Ibilia, uh, what is the position of the OST? Sir, bali, sinusuporta namin yung bills and ang siguro ang ano na namin yung sa segregation and collection na baka mawala siya eh kung sakali lalo na kung uh, kasi nasa ano na siya sir eh, sa DNR sa uh, solid waste management act yung nasa RA 9003 na. oh, nasa RA sir sa sa batas na sir eh bali uh, parang may redundancy lang siya ng konti and then sa Senate bill number 1001 Meron na share na guidelines yung sa waste to energy na uh, nag-present sa DNR na one of the ano yung yung waste to energy sa kailangan uh, hindi ma-impose yung segregation at source uh, sa household levels kasi mostly yung waste to energy na uh, mostly from other countries are not segregated, mixed waste na siya, sir, eh. Kaya, ganun, sir, yung position ng DOST. So, ang worry Ay, niyo, hindi, baka mawala pa. na yung konsepto ng segregation kasi baka tama rin na ang tao kasi pa, lahat naman yan, pasok yes, na waste to energy. Oh, yes, sir. Eh. Oh, yes, sir. I, I, think, I think there are some uh, facilities that would only uh, require uh, dry uh, waste. So, the wet waste uh, coming from the markets, coming from uh, other household sources will not be accepted. So, segregation will still be there. Uh, don't you think so? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kasama naman yun, sir, sa guidelines, eh. Sa waste to energy. 
So, but my question is this, how can the Department of Science and Technology help in these efforts? Wala, wala ba kayong maimbento na, na ma machine kung paanong teknolohiya yung kahit sa mga probinsya natin sa barangay without without uh, requiring a an expensive importation of a a small uh, plant that would uh, produce energy uh, have you have you taken the initial steps ang magagaling ang nakaimbento nga kayo ng ano eh ng satellite na maliit na, nakaimbento kayo uh, ng iba't ibang mga telescope so hindi ba kayo makaimbento nitong uh, waste to energy din so that if you can have that template, isa inyo na lang pupunta yung mga LGUs natin. Uh, sir, bali yung waste to energy namin, uh, hindi pa siya commercially stage niya eh. Bali, puro pilot stage siya, sir, uh, going to commercialization. So, meaning to say, you have initiated some incremental steps and you have a, a finished product now, which can be uh, tested. Sir, pilot Puro pilot, ano yun, sir? Puro Just pilot. Kasi may uh, produkto na kayong pwedeng gamitin. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dati, naka-invento kayo ng tren, eh. Naka-invento kayo <laughs> ng... Di ba? Marami na kayong nagawa dati. Submarine na lang yes, hindi nyo nagagawa. So, baka magawa nyo rin itong, <laughs> ano? Waste to energy. Actually, siguro, in the next few years, magagawa na namin yun, sir. I'll, ano, I'll talk to Secretary De La Peña. Sana mag-invest mag kayo ng konting research and development dito kasi hindi na natin may iwasan ng basura. Uh, uh, sir, not just in urban areas but even in rural areas. Even waste uh, waste coming from hospitals and medical facilities would need uh, this uh, facility. Any other you, uh, item? Uh, nandito po ba ang, ano, ang DILG? Wala? Wala talaga? So with that, uh, the committee is likewise inclined to have a technical working group that would refine the twin bills calling for the amendment of the local government code that would institutionalize the basic service of integrated waste, solid waste collection in all local government units, amending the local government code for that purpose and to include a provision on waste to energy uh, facilities. Uh, Senator De La Rosa, I think uh, it's it's almost two o'clock. Uh, we're still here in the Senate. Uh, without objection on your part, sir, the committee is now forming a TWG for Senate Bill 695 and uh, 1011 and will submit the same to the plenary for approval. This committee meeting of the local government joined with the Committee on Government Corporations and Public Enterprise, Environment and Natural Resources, Finance and Energy is hereby adjourned. And we thank all the resource persons, especially Mayor Magalong, Congressman uh, Go, the City Council members of uh, Baguio, Mayor Sara Duterte, and all other resource persons for attending. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon.